the Built for Tough pregame report. Brought to you by the next Ford F-150. Only this truck earned the right... 26, Andrew Whitworth. At guard from Lake Charles, Louisiana, number 71, Nate Livings. Center from Hemp Hill, Texas, number 55, Ben Wilkerson. At guard from Waveland, Mississippi, number 72, Stephen Peterman. At tackle from West Monroe, Louisiana, number 60, Rodney Reed. At tight end from Monroe, Louisiana, number 47, Eric Edwards. At wide receiver from West Wigo, Louisiana, number five, Skylar Green. At wide receiver from Opelousas, Louisiana, number nine, Devery Henderson. And wide receiver from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, number 14, Michael Clayton. And running back from Lake Charles, Louisiana, number 25, Justin Benson. And quarterback from Jasper, Indiana, number 18, Matt Mouth. Head coach, Nick Saban and the number two BCS-ranked LSU Tigers. Yeah. Let's go to Lynn Swan with Coach Saban. Coach Saban, this is the first time as the head coach of the LSU Tigers that you're coaching in a national championship game. You probably know guys who have been in your shoes before. What's the advice they gave you about this game? Well, I think that the most important thing for us is that we play with our identity as a football team, with the character and attitude that we played with all year. It's difficult in a situation like this, but we got a good football team, and that's how we want to play. Good luck to you, Coach. All right, thank you. Great. Introducing the Oklahoma Sooners offense. At tackle from Weatherford, Oklahoma, number 60, Wes Sims. At guard from Beaumont, Texas, number 70, Kelvin Shishan. At center from Waco, Texas, number 50, Vince Carter. At guard from Hallandale, Florida, number 77, Davin Joseph. At tackle from Lawton, Oklahoma, number 55, Jamal Brown. At tight end from Weatherford, Oklahoma, number 86, Lance Donnelly. At wide receiver from Arlington, Texas, number nine, Mark Clayton. At wide receiver from Humble, Texas, number 29, Will Peoples. Wide receiver from Texarkana, Texas, number 81, Brandon Jones. At H back from Midwest City, Oklahoma, number 38, J.D. Ronalds. And running back from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 47, Ronaldo Works. Quarterback from Total Oklahoma, number 18, Jason White. 
Head coach Bob Stoops of the number one BCS ranked Oklahoma Sooners. as we pray for our servicemen and women overseas and hope for peace across our land and throughout the world. Thank you. Now please join multi-platinum Columbia recording artist Jessica Simpson in the singing of our national anthem. job well done and uh, I welcome my partner Gary Daniels and Gary first of all happy new year same to you Brent now the BCS championship game we were there when the trouble started right. Oklahoma lost big to Kansas State any lingering <laughs> This BCS championship game, let's go down to Jack Aru. Well, Brett, you know Nick Saban leaves nothing to chance. In fact, he is a stickler for detail. So a couple of days ago, while cruising the internet, what did his staff find on the OU official website? But championship materials, hats, t-shirts, caps. So Nick Saban demanded that they download those offers, and he put them in his locker room. They're prominently posted in bulletin board material. Let's check in with the fourth member of our team tonight, Lynn Swan. Thank you very much, Jack. As you point out, very often little things can make big occasions unbelievably fantastic. And what's going to happen here in special teams, I believe, is that Antonio Perkins for Oklahoma is going to be a catalyst for this football team. He's unbelievable. He's an All-American returning punch. He returned three in one game against UCLA. He's an All-American. But LSU has Skylar Green, number five. He, too, is an All-American. He's returned two for touchdowns this year. He's averaging over 20, about 20 yards per return. But Oklahoma's 
punt team has held all their opponents to 3.5 yards per return, Brent. Something's got to give you. Exactly. And as we take a look at Bob Stoops, the fifth season in Norman, Oklahoma. 55 and 10. One national title and two Big 12 titles already. He's been to five bowls and he is three and one. Matching wits with one of the best. Nick Saban in his fourth year at LSU. He's out of Fairmont, West Virginia. And he's one of the hottest names you hear with regard to perhaps moving on to the NFL. We'll develop that story as the evening proceeds. Now, Oklahoma won the coin toss, as you saw. And that means LSU will go on the attack for Ray DiCarlo. All on this new artificial surface. Skyler Green with all that speed and more speed. Devery Henderson into the end zone. Thought about it. Takes a knee. And it'll come out on the 20-yard line. So here is Matt Knock. Number one in the SEC in pass efficiency rating. And what an interesting story. 24 years old. You see his football numbers there. But folks, this young man was in the Chicago Cubs organization for three years before deciding to come back to college. He has passed his exams to go to dental school. He has a choice to make. There will be three factors. Does he come back and play next year for Nick Saban? Does he take a shot at the NFL, or does he just move on to dental school? We'll develop that story. First down play, Vincent, the freshman, breaks free in the secondary. Foot race, he can go the distance. Straight trips him up. At the 19-yard line, Derek Strait trips up freshman sensation Justin Vincent, who has reeled off three straight 100-yard games for the Tigers and just electrified this crowd. Oklahoma comes out and blitzes on the first play. Safety blitz, when you get through the first level of linebackers, you have no safety help. Oklahoma, remember, Brent Venables is calling the new defenses, takes their safety out of the middle and attacks, and they get burned. After the long run, Joseph Adai checks in. So a 64-yard run to start the game. Adai, behind the H-back, tries to get to the corner, jumps over one defender, and is out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Now the Nokia starting lineup for this OU defense stunned on the first play from scrimmage. That front, one of the best, featuring Tommy Harris. Teddy Lehman, the all-world linebacker, outrun when Vincent broke into the free. And there on the right is senior Derek Strait, number two, who just tripped up Vincent as he was headed for the end zone. Lehman now on the Sooners trying to regroup. Oklahoma's in with their nickel, five DBs. First pass to Clayton, and he's just shy of the 10-yard line. Derek Strait, number two. Strait, of course, won the Thorpe Award as the top defensive back in college football, but he was also voted the winner of the Nagurski as the best overall defensive player in the nation, and he showed you a bit of his stuff with that tackle of Eddie Vincent, who was headed for the end zone that time. Here comes third down. And Shelby checks into that defensive package. Yeah, that's, Brandon Shelby, an extra defensive back here. That's six of them on this field right now against four wide receivers for LSU. Mock back in the shotgun. Low snap, picks it up, fires, complete. Clayton's got it inside the five and battles his way inside the three. That is a first and goal, but hold on. There is a penalty flag thrown back the 21-yard line. An unbelievable catch by Matt Mock. His baseball skills came through, as you see, roughing the passer after he let it go. This was like a knuckleball. He makes the stop, and he throws the guy out at second base. That's where those athletic skills come through. What a play. Catch it, the grab passer, it, refocus, and he gets hit with the elbow right in the face. That's a wonderful call. What a play by Matt Mock. And he put the ball in the hands of one of the strongest wide receivers of the SEC, Michael Clayton, who just battled his way to the two-yard line where it'll be first and goal. And the jumbo set will now come in as Clayton goes to the sideline. I really think Oklahoma's corners lost their focus when they saw the ball drop on the ground. Justin Vincent in behind two lead blockers. Mock goes down again, bobbled the snap from Wilkerson. I don't know if he got this one. 
and it's turned over inside the five-yard line. Oklahoma has the football. Derek Strait recovered it. First, he saves the touchdown with the tackle. Then he recovers this fumble. Bad center exchange. A quarterback in goal line offense must be very careful with the center. The center reach blocks, and a lot of times their butt turns a lot, and you don't get the snap. We'll take a break. Oklahoma has the ball inside the five. Timeout. second snap of the season only eight of them bad after it occurred both coach and quarterback went over to pick him up with encouragement there were no harsh words exchanged after the bad center quarterback exchange Gary you had a reason for why it happened yes it was a reach block by the center and that is really on the quarterback he must really stay with the center and ride especially in goal line especially on first down you just can't have that happen on first down our first look at Jason White since he picked up the Heisman Trophy in New York. The toss play to Jones, who tries to get the corner against this fast defense, and Jack Hunt, the senior, comes up on him. So many of you know the story of Jason White. You read about him, you saw him, his very gracious acceptance speech, only the fourth Sooner to win the Heisman. He is a senior, but he can come back next year. He was granted an extra year of eligibility, and everyone around Soonerland expects that he will be back. Now, after Kiwan Jones started the game, Ronaldo Works checks in. Jones was a situation starter simply because they were backed up and they wanted to see if he could get the corner like he did against Kansas State. He did not. Second down and from the end zone, White moving the pocket. Now comes far to double coverage, thrown, juggle, intercepted by Webster. Webster at the 40-yard line. Corey Webster still going down to the 31-yard line. One of the best defensive backs in college football. Picks it off, and now it is a turnover apiece. And as Gary Danielson predicted, this will be a fierce defensive war all the way. Bump and run coverage. Oklahoma goes after the bump and one with the double cut. Watches out and up, but the great technique by Webster, and then this ball is just thrown for anybody to get it. Remember, Corey Webster, number 13, the All-American defensive back, was recruited as a wide receiver and actually played one whole year here at wide receiver. He's very comfortable with the football in the air. He's a tall corner. Both of Nick Saban's corners are tall, and Bob Stoops and his staff have had to adjust and breaking offside is Oklahoma, I believe, on this play. Fumble the ball. There's a fumble, however, and it goes to Oklahoma. If they weren't offside, the linesman threw the flag. It was recovered by Dante Nicholson. There was no question, I thought, from up here that they were it was offside. Cody right here. Yep, clearly, clearly. Came quite across. Whitworth had no chance to block Cody, but then another fumble. Ball on the ground. You can feel the bigness of this football game. Mistakes. Self-inflicted wounds already. Jason White shouldn't have thrown the ball up. The double cut wasn't there. Should have thrown it away on second down. The fumbled snap, and now another one right here. David Jones checks in with the play. Now Matt Knock has got the formation from the sideline. First and five after the Offside penalty on Dan Cody. Vincent on a play fake. Mock stands at the 35. He was an excellent runner a couple years ago. On the move, throws in zone incomplete. And he too fired into coverage down there, looking for Clayton. And Green when Henderson was behind him. For the Oklahoma Sooners and the LSU Tigers at the Nokia Sugar Bowl playing for the BCS National Championship tonight in New Orleans, Louisiana. And we figured it would be defense, and so far this game has featured a turnover apiece. But again, LSU with superb field position. 
and Vincent already with a 64-yard bolt for the offense. He's standing back at the 35-yard line on this second down and five after the incompletion. Let's see if they come back with the freshman. They do. Tries to cut to the left, breaks the first tackle, and crosses the 25-yard line. Everidge could not wrap him up, but Teddy Lehman does as we check in down below with Jack and Ruth. Well, Brent, when Nick Saban first got to LSU, Corey Webster wasn't even in the potential recruiting class. In fact, it was Nick who gathered the coaches, the new staff together, and said, I want to see all of the available players. I want a new list. When he got that list together, there's where Corey Webster's name appeared. It's a good thing that he asked for a recall. All right, Jack, and Skylar Green has just checked in from LSU. He's out to the right. It's the three-pack. It's Clayton. It's Henderson. It's Green for Mount. And he'll call a timeout after looking at that defense. The linebackers had dropped way back into a looked like a zone, and Mount called timeout. I said, Joe. the first down got it turned here he comes the track man zips to the end zone for the game's first touchdown 24 yards for Skylar Green Run the sweep. Watch this block by Joseph Adai right here, right on the outside. He gets the outside hip, outside leg. Michael Clayton downfield blocking the All-American wide receiver. He gets his block, and they spin into the end zone. Big play. Ryan Godet will kick tonight. He makes the extra point. It's 7-0. championship game there are six freshmen on this kickoff team including Chris Jackson who was a quarterback right here at New Orleans High School he is the long leg doesn't get it up quite as quickly as Ryan Godet does so before the game Nick Saban had both of them kicking he's concerned because they had trouble in the SEC championship game so Godet takes over tonight high deep and on into the end zone Oklahoma will take a knee well, ABC Tuesday, what's up with Rory? It's a coming-of-age episode you can't miss. And I'll do eight simple rules, eight, seven seconds. Two straight years. I've never seen them all year before Kansas State. The longest play they gave up was 42 yards. Now multiple big plays. That means players are trying to do too much. They're getting outside the defense. Jones is the running back. Off to the quarterback's right. With three wideouts, Jason White goes down the sideline. Clayton juggles incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. And how quickly the safeties are reacting for LSU to double up on that side as we take a look now at the Nokia defensive lineup for LSU. Spears, Lavalle gets all the pub, but Marquise Hill, he played a little football too. And the linebackers, Eric Alexander, wants a safety. Moves in there to give great speed at that real linebacker spot. Randall Gay, a senior, he's the nickelback. LaRon Landry, the leading tackler with this team. You've already met Mr. Corey Webster, who has an interception here tonight. Second down and 10 for Jason White, who seems to be flinging the ball in the air. He puts this one into Jones's hands. Jones battles his way to the 25-yard line. Gary, I'm not sure I recognize the throwing motion that the quarterback, Jason White, is using. He seems to be marching the ball more than we Well, he has thrown against bump and run two fade passes. This is a little slip screen. Can't really measure much on this one. No, but he, he has taken a pounding in the last two games. He hurt his wrist, remember, against Kansas State. And uh, you know, we still wonder if that's 100%. But when you face bump and run, you have to throw the fades. And he's been lobbing a few of them so far. Saban's two corners are right up there in a familiar coverage. Just three yards off. Lavalle was battling his way in and his interference on this play. That's Webster had jumped Jones coming across and that flag was thrown because of Corey Webster's aggressive defense. Now, Gary, give us a read as a former quarterback 
what you look for now in a bump and run situation like this when you know you've got press cover. Early in the football game, you've got to be careful not to fall into the trap of throwing too many fades. They want you to throw fades. It's a low priority, low percentage completion. You must establish that slant pass. And I think Chuck Long did the right thing of saying, we must show you that we'll try to get that ball inside out. Jack, uh, let's follow up on that hand story. Could there still be a problem with the quarterback? Well, Brent, they say, and Jason insists that it is not, but when he came home from the Heisman Trophy week in New York City, I went to shake his hand when I was in Norman, and he winced in pain. When I got here, likewise. I don't know, Gary, but it could be affecting his throw. It's still a little tender. Runnels lines up in front of Works. He's a lead blocker, and he's a dandy. Works cuts back in that defensive front for the Tigers. Now, Gary, I want to take everybody back to Arrowhead Stadium that night on December 6th. And take a look at this because this is the play that you talked about when Jason White is abused. It was the interception, big interception, and when they headed down there, it was a 14-7 game. He lands on it. You see it right there. Those things linger. Look, you know, we just watched Brett Favre play. It had thumb has lingered all year. What a great victory in overtime for the Packers on an interception. Second down, Randall Gay checks in as the nickel back. Jones comes through the motion for the Sooners. White back in that shotgun. The offensive line gives him time. He completes it in underneath. And we're always to the 41-yard line before. There was Marquise Hill at 6'7", 245. Very active defensive end from New Orleans. Jump back on the play. One of the things that LSU wants to do, and their defensive coordinator, Will Muschamp, wants to do is take away the screen and draw game from Oklahoma. There's Will right there. He says they are great at screens and draws. We must force Jason White to throw the ball downfield, or we won't be able to sack him. Third down and three, back in a passing formation with four wide for the Sooners. Spread the field, deflected incomplete. It is fourth down. The Sooners are forced to punt. Deflected balls. They had eight of them against Georgia. On the short passing game, they jumped. They're very tall at the defensive line position. That time it was Pittman, number 48, that got it. Now, the number one return man in the nation. Remember, Perkins had all the touchdown runs, but Ferguson matched up with him, drives it deep. They're going to see what he's got over his head and on into the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. That was Bradley, Mark Bradley, racing downfield on coverage. One of the sooner wide receivers. LSU up by seven. We've got a timeout. Football coming out from their own 20-yard line. Matt Mount was unable to play in last year's Cotton Bowl because of a foot injury. He's now very healthy for this game here tonight. Moves up under center. And on first down, they elect to put it in the air, and his receiver slipped. Henderson slipped. He slipped right on the painted portion of the, uh, the, the artificial turf right there. Well, let's talk about what I think is going to happen. Controlling the line of scrimmage. Both coaches said the offensive lines and defensive lines must come through for their team to win it so far. That LSU defensive line is controlling it. Nick Saban believes like the NFL believes. Third down is get the ball, keep the ball down. Let's see who wins that one. And defensive big plays. We've seen Derek Strait with one. We've seen the fumbled uh, snap, and then we've seen the interception. That was a third down touchdown. Third and two, 24 yards. So there was your big play right there. Down. Second down and 10. Vincent battling for two or three. Let's check in with Lynn Swan. Lynn? Brent, Michael Clayton will tell you that his assets are catching the ball with great hands, but combined with his physical ability, makes him an unstoppable combination. Here he catches the contested pass, keeps the drive alive and the team going, and he sacrifices his ability by making blocks unselfishly to help his teammates move down the field. That's the kind of player you want on your team. That's how you win championships. And so, Gary, now on this third down, we've got Michael Clayton poised. And I think it'll be very conservative by Nick Saban. His defense is controlling the game. He will not let Matt Mock lose the ball game down here. And Mock decides to use still another timeout. Remember, he knows how to manage the game. And something was not right for him. And so he will use his second timeout. I believe the clock was ticking down. And the man who is under the gun is right there. The new defensive coordinator. Remember, Mike Stoops has just been a consultant yeah, for I, this I, game. He's become the head coach at Arizona. Let me fix this right here. Get that co right there because Mike is now the coach at Arizona right there. He's got all alone now, baby. 
Nobody to share that 62-yard run against. Now Malkin, Webster, Webster the center. You can see him identifying the defense. Three-man line for Oklahoma. And they come on the blitz. Malk stands tall, fires right side, incomplete. So the blitz helps force an incompletion. Skylar Green, the intended target, and Malk picks himself up off the artificial turf. Three-man line. They bring six players. You see it. Someone comes free. It's Brandon Shelby, number five. If you want a scout report on Brent Venables, both, and the difference between he and Mike Stoops, Venables likes the blitz more. Now, here it's Perkins' turn. Antonio Perkins, we saw him light up UCLA with three punt return touchdowns in one game back at Norman. Donnie Jones, one of the best punters in the country, matched against him. Oklahoma worked long and hard on trying to block a punt. They got a pretty good look that time. He may come up with something later. And Perkins catching the ball collides with, I believe it was his own man. It was pushed back into him. and. Uh, they will spot the ball right there at the 36-yard line. Gary, let's take a look at our dodge. They move White back up center, indicating that maybe they're going to try to run the ball. They do. They bring Clayton around in, jumps over one would-be defender, and he's close to the 50-yard line, and he has moved the chains, and there is their run coordinator, Kevin Wilson. A little bit under the gun, too, because of the offensive line's performance. Over the last three games, they've allowed a lot more sacks than they did earlier in the year. Now, Kevin says you have to walk, run on this front, and by far, Chad Lavalle, number 93, he believes is their best defensive lineman. First down now at 48-yard line after the 12-yard run. Still in that eye. They come back with Jones. And something's cooking here, Mr. Danielson. Well, that's exactly what I believe Oklahoma had to do all year. Establish and take some of the pressure off their quarterback. When Jason White has an average game, they lose. When he has just a little bit of a good game, they can lose. He has to almost play great towards the end of the season for Oklahoma to win. And against these great defense, it's very tough for a quarterback to carry it without a running game. And again, they are back in that power eye. And again, they run Jones, twisting, turning. Got another first down on it. Now, here is the Tostitos player comparison. I mentioned Lavalle, Gary, and there's another pretty good defensive lineman in this game. I mean, Harris, uh, you know, everybody's looking whether he will go pro. Chad Lavalle will obviously turn pro. He's been here 24 years old. Tommy Harris, they're saying, is a top five pick in the NFL, but he does not make a lot of tackles. If you watch him, he causes a lot of disruption but doesn't let it a lot of tackles. This guy, Lavalate, makes a lot of plays. It is interesting that the OU coaches had moved White up under center, and now they back him out. Back again in that shotgun with four receivers. That's a tight end, Donnelly. Over there is a look. He picks up the blitzer. Great read. White goes down. Near sideline. Jones jumps. And incomplete. I believe he was out of bounds. There's a young man who's a fine baseball player. He's been a starting outfielder for two years for the Sooners. The New York Yankees drafted him but couldn't sign him back in 2001. He makes a nice catch here. Travis Daniels pushes the receiver to the sideline. Look at no room to throw the football. A perfectly thrown ball and you're out of bounds. That's the technique. That's exactly what the defense is trying to do. And on that play, Brandon Jones got beat. Did not allow Jason White any room. And that is the best throw of the night Absolutely. for Jason White. But he did serve notice. He's got that throw. <laughs> Second and ten. Back under center. Clayton coming in formation. Basically a slot man. Penalty flag is thrown prior to the snap, and this is going to cost Oklahoma. Now, Nick Saban, we have told you, blitz crew, bump and run. He allowed us to mic him at practice in Baton Rouge. I want you all to take a listen to Coach Saban. All right, now come back. Outside in. Are we in strike? We in strike. Nobody's locking out. We strike the guy. You got to strike him first. You get your hands inside on him. All right, now lock this arm out. And lock that arm out so you can steer him. See, when he got this arm down, then you, you're, getting, you're getting turned out. He's a hands-on <laughs> teacher. He's one of the best in the business. I can see why three or four NFL teams are interested, but he's very happy for the time being. White is back sidearm incomplete. They were using... They had brought in Donta Hickson. They told me, Cale Gundy, the running back coach, had told me that Donta Hickson is going to see some action here tonight because of his speed. They are 
so cognizant of how much speed Saban has on the defensive side of the ball that the changeup is going to be number 35, Donta Hickson. Now third and long is exactly where those defenses love to bring that zone blitz. They overload one side, and then they play a soft zone behind it. Now where will the pressure come from? You know it's coming from LSU. They're not going to rush four. There'll be five and maybe six. Here they come. White tries to find an open man. Incomplete, and the pressure was closing in from behind. And White, even though he wasn't sacked, he was down at midfield. He was knocked down on that play. It was an all-out blitz, third and long, and it was man-to-man -man coverage. They're manned up all over the field right here, and here it comes. Here it comes, Jay. Down below with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, before the season started, Nick Saban pulled out a DVD and played it for his team. It's the story of Seabiscuit. He explained to his players that Seabiscuit was an unheralded thoroughbred. And he said he was a horse that didn't get any respect and was a champion. He said, we're going to play this season exactly like Seabiscuit. Ah, uh, that was such an enjoyable family movie, Jack. Enjoyed every minute of it. I think I'll go out to the fairgrounds tomorrow and see if I can find me a Seabiscuit. Uh, <laughs> hey, Brent, though, he's got some studs that aren't Seabiscuits on his team, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's got some thoroughbreds. Secretariat, maybe? And yes, he Justin does. Justin Vincent, the freshman. Out to the right. And slammed down at the 16. Gayron Allen, the linebacker, moves in. Folks, we are capacity plus. I've done a lot of football games here. Never seen a bigger crowd. We've had big plays. Corey Webster with the interception for the Tigers. And then Green on the wide end around. And the splinter on the four by 100 meter NCAA champion relay team takes it to the end zone for the touchdown. And it'll be second down and long. Now, Gary, you make such a good point about Matt Mock. What's your feeling about what he must do here tonight? Just not. Just manage the game early. Don't lose the game before you have to. Just stay. Keep making first downs. Hand the ball off. Stay out of the bad place. When the LSU coaches, we ask them, why are you running the ball better the second half of the year? They said, well, number one, our freshman backs are better. But number two, Matt Mock has gained some experience, and he gets us out of those bad plays. We used to call him, the coaches used to say, well, just dial it again. You know, that one didn't work. Well, Matt Mock gets him out of those dial it again plays. He gets him into the right play. He'll be married later this year. Has the play from the sideline. Center is Webster. Defensive line's made only one mistake here tonight. Third down and six for the Tigers, and Mock straight back. Well, intercepted by Everage. There is a penalty flag. Everage at the 20-yard line, but the penalty flag was thrown behind the defensive backfield that time, and Clayton's picking himself up. Yeah, he got off the ground right now. I thought Clayton got held on the play. Yes. The ball would have been incomplete anyway, but again, you know, in these big games, no matter how much you practice, there's an anxiety factor. Everything that looks good in practice, you panic during the game and you grab a guy. Bob Stoops is not happy by that call. Let's see if it and was you clean. can see he is protesting vehemently on the sideline. I thought the flag came after the interception by Everidge. It... Let's listen to the Big East crew now. Sideline warning against LSU. That is their first warning of the game. Well, Bob Stoops is four years the other out on the field. <laughs> yeah, the warnings for Nick Saban, go figure. <laughs> How about the important play? <laughs> yeah, we're not too concerned about that sideline warning on the far side. Now, I, I think right we now. don't know if it was holding on, on Michael Clayton. They obviously don't give the number. They don't even give the penalty on this one. But it, the ball was hot, thrown very high. I don't even know if it was catchable on top of that. And that's what Bob Stoops was upset with. The holding call, not pass interference. That was a holding call. So that it moves the football out to the 27. That's true. It and that matter. makes it. Yes. A first down automatic. So now Everidge slipping up close to the line. Ali Broussard, another of the talented freshmen, checks in on the draw to the middle. And another freshman running back, number 22, bolts up the middle. Well, let's see if we can spot something. Here's the giver. The ball is going to go to the deep safety. Mock steps back. Doesn't like to make these mistakes. A little of pressure. I don't know. The, the, tight the end's holding was on the tight end that right there. That's exactly right. Shelby, Shelby, was, Shelby was holding the tight end. Yep. And that was released. a good call. That was a good call right there. 
You gotta watch them all, and somebody's watching the tight end and the back judge, and he got it. Second and four for Mock and the Tigers. So it's Ali Broussard's turn on the pitch. Wilkerson pulls. Nothing doing. Couldn't get that corner for the ball checkers over there. And Derek Strait is playing a whale of a football game. Strait caught Vincent on a breakaway on the first offensive play of the game. Recovered a fumble inside the five-yard line. Now he makes the play on Broussard. Well, let's see now if Nick Saban doesn't get into Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator for LSU, and say, I don't want that ball thrown down the middle again. Let's run a quarterback draw or something safe and punt the ball. They haven't proved they can move it on us. 25 and into the opening quarter. Five seconds left. 25 seconds left. Mock gets the snap in the gun. Drops it off to Green on a flanker screen, and it was read beautifully by Allen. That's one of those plays where both sides say good play. Nick Saban felt that uh, his team was a little dangerous going out of his own end zone. Bob Stoops' defense, Brett Venables recovered from the holding call, and they get the ball back and into the dangerous hands of Perkins. Johnny Jones. Look at these wide splits, splits, Brent. Look at the size of these splits here for LSU. Look at that space between these guys. Oklahoma was working long and hard on blocking a punt all week long. Up over the top comes Bradley. Jones gets it off. Perkins. Fumble! Battle for the loose ball. And Oklahoma recovered it. The official right on top of that play. There was an early call there. Well, wait a minute. I always feel it's signaling like they're going to come up with that football, but the officials are hanging tough. Perkins kind of gambles on this play, but you know, you know, you got to make plays. It was right in his stomach right there. Very tough arena to catch punts in. High ceiling, bright lights, and Perkins drops a walk first one. Jason White and the Sooners. There's the offense back on the field now. White has missed his last four passes. Be looking for something short. There's the H-back Runnels. He's been a very active blocker. Lead man, Jones, slices to the 41-yard line. Five times and only thrown the ball twice. You can see they respect that pass rush and want to establish the running game. And they are really giving Runnels a workout. Now they have the three wide receivers bunched, and they bring Wilson through the formation. They've stacked basically over on the left side. White's going to roll the pocket over there into difficulty, throw it up for grabs, out of bounds. Incomplete. The pressure was coming that time from Marquise Hill. He's a big one. He's the, the, the emergence of the two defensive ends. Kill and Spears have really brought this defense. Before it was just Slavale inside. But this team, eight different players on this defense have three or more sacks. Imagine that. Eight different players on the team. That's how they come from all angles. You know, it's not just all blitz here. On second down, they're giving them a lot of zone also. Chuck Long told me that J.D. Runnels was going to be the key to this game. He's got to pick up the blitzers. Third and long. He's back in. He's the bodyguard to the left. Looking for pressure. He's got one. Gave White time. Fired. First down at midfield. So J.D. Runnels doing some of the little things allows White to have enough time to hit Mark Clayton. What a fine block that was. Sometimes when you blitz, you get a bad matchup. And that's what happened for LSU this time. And Jason White found it. You get Clayton on Jack Hunt. That's the safety right there. Jack Hunt cannot cover Mark Clayton. Watch him get turned around inside and outside, and there it is, an easy first down. Wonderful job by Jason White. The illegal Sooners form illegal an formation. illegal formation. This is going to cost them five yards. They'll bring it back. It'll be first down and 15. Now, we have only a minute 13 left in the opening quarter here, Gary. There's an emerging story. Oklahoma, the highest scoring team in the nation, has not scored in almost four quarters. Remember, they scored on their first series against Kansas State in Kansas City in the Big 12 championship right. game. They have not scored since then. 15 straight drives, 79 plays. Looked like one of my career highlights right there. 
You were better than that. <laughs> those are one of the ones where I put the back up, start not work, talking to the coach for a long time after one of those. First time he's ever been self-effacing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they tried to trick play Oklahoma did that time. A quick huddle, quick snap, but they did not line up properly. So here's your first and 15 after the five-yard penalty. Rungle stays in in a fullback position. They try to run behind him with Jones, and it was eaten alive that time by Travis Daniels. So the defensive back comes up and makes the play. Corner blitz that time. They ran it right into the corner cat blitz. That is good coaching. You can tell this defense is inside the head, head of Oklahoma. There's Muschamp. Every time I saw him for the last, uh, what, three weeks, he was watching tape, wasn't he? Yes, he was. <laughs> and he finally told us, he finally broke down, he said, look, if you rush four on Jason White, he'll complete 60% of his passes. If you rush five or six, it drops down to 43. So guess what he had in mind? <laughs> Who counts all that stuff? Second down. White is back. Tries to drop it off, and uh, Wilson juggling it on the dive was able to uh, pull it in for a completion but uh, no, I think it's down they'll be brought back down to the line of scrimmage minus two yards he lost on that play so ABC Sports presentation of the Nokia Sugar Bowl will return with the second quarter after this message and a word from our Third down. Third and long on that one, and I think that's a good job by Oklahoma and Jason White, just taking what's there, not trying to force the ball downfield and playing a little field position game. Looks like Oklahoma's defense has settled down a bit, so Jason White can make a first down and just uh, punt the football. It's not the worst thing that could happen. Blake Ferguson standing back at the 35-yard line. Booms it toward Green. Green will let it bounce over his head. Bradley's right there. This will be downed inside the five-yard line. You know, uh, Gary, when you look back at the uh, brief history of the Bowl Championship Series, you found kind of an interesting theory about the winning quarterbacks in this I game. I really do. I really think it's the type of guy that's like a coach on the football team. Craig Krenzel, Josh Heupel, um, it, you know, the guys that can make decisions on the field. Matt Mock, even Jason White. You want a guy out there that doesn't really throw the ball 70 yards, but gets you out of the bad place. Those are the guys that are making plays. Bad field position here for Nick Saban and the Tigers, and they must be careful. Protecting the football, Derek Strait in on the play defensively again. That knocked the veteran, the one-time minor league baseball player. He led Jasper High School to a state championship game before losing. He was Indiana's Mr. Baseball one year. That's what he elected to sign with the team that he always dreamed of playing for the Chicago Cubs but that didn't work out he liked the team game a little bit better he remembered that Nick Saban had recruited him in Michigan State made the call and here he is tossing now to Vincent Vincent to the three yard line and uh, so it's quite a story here it really is and when you put a quarterback together you got to be a lot of different things and Matt Mock is that you mentioned a catcher he's in charge of this football team just like a, a great catcher on a baseball team very bright pre-med major he uses that it spills over into the football game and he is great with his feet he hurt that ankle last year had a lot of spring football when he wasn't 100 percent but remember he burst onto the scene in 2001 with an injury to the quarterback, and he was a runner in that football game. He hasn't run yet tonight. Back in the shotgun in that noisy end zone, directly in front of a whole lot of fans. And nothing doing for a die as Brandon Shelby leads the red shirts in on top of the LSU running back. And now, in a battle of field position, Oklahoma has an opportunity. Yeah, blitz again, right into the blitz. Could not get the bowling guard that time. Ro tackle Rodney Reed to the point of attack quick enough. And for the first time in two games, Brent, 
I've seen that swagger start to come back to this Oklahoma defense. Perkins is standing in midfield. Jones near the end line. Booms it. But this should be great field position. Perkins down at the 35-yard line. So the best opportunity of the game coming up now for Oklahoma. They're down a touchdown, but they're within striking distance. You forget who run things around here. You ain't gonna like how this ends. On January 16th, Whoa. the only way to survive... I'm going to head by midnight. This just keeps getting better and better. ...is to break every rule. Does it have to be this much fun? Damn right. From the producer of the Fast and the Furious and SWAT. Let's ride. You can come up with on first down. Nick Saban, like all outstanding defensive coaches, is a down and distance guy. He wants to win first and second down. He wants to keep him third and long. Ronaldo works. In is the running back. Remember now, White is under center. That has been a tip run so far here tonight. Play fake this time. White's in trouble, and he is sacked at the 44-yard line. That's why they put him in the shotgun when he throws the ball. Chuck Long saying he has more time to throw it. He couldn't pull out from center. Yeah, Jason doesn't get back in the pocket. Well, he's not used to it. He hasn't practiced it in this defense. Lionel Turner coming at it. Great speed, forcing the ball carrier back inside. The whole game plan has been attack the quarterback, and when he throws, get your hands up because he likes to throw short balls. Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, as uh, one of his players now is being tended to on the field. That's Melvin Oliver, the sophomore defensive lineman. Shake it up. Jack, this is uh, this is one of the best defenses we've seen this year, this LSU team. Boy, Brent, they're very impressive, and maybe one of the reasons is because where they went and off to, to study, you know, all these coaches, they like to exchange ideas in the offseason. Well, Mike Stoops, the former defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, been at LSU to study their defense in 2001, and then uh, Oklahoma returned the favor for Will Muschamp as he went down to Oklahoma in Norman and studied the defense in 2002. Bet you they won't be doing that anytime soon. Uh, there is uh, Mike Stoops, now the head football coach at the University of Arizona. He's been attending the practices, helping out a little bit, but basically staying pretty much out of the way. His brother had moved over to coach the secondary, and there you see Brent Venables discussing it with head coach Bob Stoops. Bob used to be a defensive backfield coach, so that was nothing new, but it certainly did strain the time of the head coach. Now back in the shotgun, goes White on second down at 19. They throw a screen to Clayton, who has blazing speed. Puts it down, goes after it. As Lavalle comes off the defensive front to make the play. Well, here's our Aflac trivia question. Oklahoma and LSU have met only once before, which is hard to believe, in the 1950 Sugar Bowl. And who was Oklahoma's quarterback that day back in 1950? It appears that Oklahoma on third down is very, very leery of throwing deep downfield. They don't think they can hold up in the pass rush on Jason White. So they need to try to hit something underneath. And the whistle prior to the snap thrown on the far side and uh, indicating a timeout being called by LSU. So that would exhaust their timeouts here in the first half. So we'll take a break. An air show here tonight, folks. One quarterback thrown for 28, Gary, and the other 12. Yeah, but this guy, Jason White, has to play A ball for his team to win. Matt Mock only has to play C ball for his team to win. Third down. 18 yards the Sooners need on this play. White dances to the right on the move. Incomplete. And it's fourth down, so after inheriting field position at the 35 following the Perkins punt return, they now squander that advantage against this LSU defense, and Blake Ferguson drops onto the field. When you take a look at third downs for Oklahoma, they are one of five as Nick Saban continues to keep them in third and long here tonight. Nice hold up by Tommy Lehman right there as the slot man over the gunner started to come from the right side of the screen. 
Speed from the corner. Runnels has got him. Here's Green letting it go over his head, and Ferguson has dropped one inside the 10-yard line. Just inside it, there is a penalty flag. You can see it on your screen. Our referee, Dennis Hennigan, goes down to, to get it all sorted out in this game, in which Oklahoma has only 48 yards of offense against this LSU defense. They could do nothing, nothing, with field position at the Tigers' 35-yard line. I'll tell you, Brent, that last third down play, Travis Daniels took on Mark Clayton. You can see personal foul. They hit the Skylar Green on that play. But go back to that third down play. Watch this coverage by Travis Daniels. Started the year out as a safety. But when Leron Lundy came on as a better player, it allowed Daniels to move back to corner. And here you see, getting the receiver, you can get the ball. That's going to be a penalty, an obvious penalty on Oklahoma. And that was Broadney Poole, the defensive back, who was uh, guilty. Personal foul on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat fourth down. Well, Stoops wants an explanation. This is very interesting. Because the play wasn't over, and there was a personal foul during the play, yeah, well, they, they, will repeat, okay. they will repeat fourth down. So instead of tacking it on with uh, LSU's ball right from there, since they never had possession of the ball, they're going to repeat it. So they'll back Ferguson up again. And remember, the nation's number one punt returner, number five, Skylar Green, who has scored the touchdown tonight on an end of round. They'll back it up. I remember the last championship game here in New Orleans, Peter Ward. Standing right back there for Florida State against Virginia Tech, and Michael Beck fielded it and took it to the end zone for a touchdown that helped propel the Knowles to a national championship. Ferguson, this one a little bit low. Green on the run. Dances, but not pass Lehman. Man, what great coverage by a starting Will Linebacker getting down the field. And remember, he was the up back of that formation. LSU ball. We come back. First down and 10. Complete. Henderson to the 26-yard line. And, uh, you know, in talking about Matt Mock, we talked to him about his strength as a quarterback. I think the one thing I really try to do is uh, is realize that, you know, I might not be the biggest, the fastest guy, but, you know, we've got a lot of those guys on the team. So if I can get the ball to them and let them, uh, you, know, uh, you know, do the hard work, uh, we'll have success. So he understands his role perfectly manages this offense for LSU adds them ahead 7-0 here second quarter of the Nokia Sugar Bowl this year's BCS championship game second down and eight for the Tigers Green comes over to the right side of the formation play fake linebacker in hot pursuit mock an excellent runner and he is crushed before he can get back to the line of scrimmage that time so we have had one touchdown and a whole lot of defense in this game so far. Only 48 total yards for Oklahoma. And 117 for LSU. 64 of them for the Tigers came on their first play from scrimmage when Benson bolted up the middle before Straight saved a touchdown with a tackle. But not before the Tigers had some excellent field position, then they fumbled it back inside the five-yard line, and it wasn't until Corey Webster intercepted a pass that the Tigers on third and two were able to score on an end around. Third down. Clayton's off the line. Mount can't get to him. And Nicholson forced him up into the pocket where there was more pressure. So number eight, Dante Nicholson, destroyed the play, and Rodney Poole cleans up on it. Now both guys for LSU, the fullback and the tailback, both missed their blocks on the play. Can't do this. Watch this. Two guys come, two guys whiff, and the quarterback has no chance. Inside, whiff, whiff. Boy, that's not good. There's nobody quick enough against him to get away from two guys. Except his name is Michael Vick when we were here last time. I remember there's a new long snapper for LSU, Gant Petty. So far, he's been Watch very out. accurate. They got it. There's the block punt recovered at the two-yard line. First and goal all week long. Bob Stoops himself worked here in the Superdome with his punting team. 
He said we can get one. He continued to preach it. And now they've given themselves an opportunity to tie this football game. Brandon Shelby, look at those widespread splits. Wide splits, here it comes from this side. Brandon Shelby, number five, is the guy who gets it. Clean run, lays out. Two guys could have got it, actually. Shelby's the one who gets it. And then it's Russell Dennison, number 36, who falls on it. And that's that big play again that Lynn talked about in the open. Might come on a punt return, but it's special teams that can usually turn a game. Jones will be the running back. Runnels the lead blocker. They switch the power of the formation over to the left-hand side. On the toss, Jones for the end zone, battling, and he has stopped just short of it against this LSU defense, and it will be second and goal as Lionel Turner out of Walker, Louisiana. Well, that was the guy that really came on in this defense from the linebacker spot. LSU fans know, beginning of this year, they thought, can we replace Brady James? Lionel Turner was an outside linebacker. He shifted inside. They brought up Eric Zal Eric Alexander. They want timeout on the Oklahoma sideline. Not sure they got the personnel they want. They do not get it signaled in time. They move the strength again to the left-hand side. Play fake. White fires for it. Incomplete. And now it is third and goal. That's a great play. Corey Webster rips that ball out. I don't know if it was dropped before he hit it. But what discipline by that defense for LSU. They ran two guys out to the left side of the formation. They're covered. Forces Jason to go backside. Throws a strike. And Clayton should have caught that ball. What a fierce goal line stand so far. In two plays, they have yielded only one yard against Oklahoma. The highest scoring team in the nation. Now they shift power over to the wide side. Runnels still the lead man. Here comes Jones, powering straight ahead. Penalty flag is thrown. A penalty flag is thrown. Certainly no indication at any time of a touchdown. Could have been two possibilities lined up in the neutral zone against LSU could be one. That's our indication. Half the distance, so they will lose about half a yard. Yeah. Now, okay. at this point, you really now wonder about Jason White being able to follow center Vince Carter into the end zone. Now, against that is the fact that he has undergone major knee operations in the left and the right in each of the previous two years. They don't like to expose him in this situation, but he is so close right now that with Joseph on the right, Carter in the center, Chayshon in the left, they should be able to power in here. They hand it off. Touchdown, Jones crossed the plane. We are an extra point away from being tied in New Orleans. It wasn't so much of the down the distance that the penalty caused, but the extra down gave Oklahoma an opportunity to run one more play, the fourth of the series, and even though it was third down, that punt block gets Oklahoma's offense off the nine. Because defensively, Oklahoma has found their game. Now, Trey DiCarlo, who struggled during the pregame warm-ups, kicking field goals from about 40 yards out, is on to attempt the extra point. He has missed two extra points this year. Not this one. Now he has kicked 73 extra points. But it was all set up because of Bob Stoops' aggressive play on the special teams. His offense going nowhere here tonight against LSU. He desperately needed a special team or a defensive unit to make a play. They did. Jones took it to the end zone. We're tied. The new Ford F-150 has the strongest, toughest frame. The high the end zone. Take a knee. Now remember our Aflac trivia question. In that 1950 Sugar Bowl, who was the winning Oklahoma quarterback. Well, let's go back and take a look. Here he is. You recognize him under center. Come on, and that's the legendary Daryl Royal. Greatest coach in Texas Longhorn football history. Just a great, great player. Norman, Oklahoma. Hope the old coach is doing well and enjoying the game tonight. Always great to see him when we go down Austin Way. See the Longhorns. We lost to Tuffy there the other night to uh, Washington State, they can't be too happy, and uh, they've got to be amazed at this LSU defense. Remember, a year ago, Roy Williams and the Horns beat this LSU team in the Cotton Bowl. Play fake Cotton now, rolls to the left, 
throws past the tight end because he had a receiver open downfield and Devery Henderson, who can run a 4-3-40, had all kinds of daylight down there for a 20-yard game. You called it exactly right. Uh, if Matt Mock doesn't complete that one, he might have to keep running because he had the tight end Eric Edwards wide open for a first down play. And when you pass up a sure completion to go downfield, you better hit it. <laughs> Believe me. You better hit it. <laughs> I like the moxie. They needed a big play. Had 114 yards going into that play, that play Brent. 64 of them on one play. They haven't moved anywhere since. Now with the first down out of the 40. Play fake knock. To Clayton. Close to the first down at midfield. And we remind you that this Saturday, all the action and excitement of the National Hockey League returns to ABC. Three wonderful regional matchups. You'll see the, the Avalanche of the Stars, Red Wings, Bruins, and Rangers Islanders, the NHL on ABC Saturday at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, and uh, check your local listings for the hockey game in your area. You probably got a lot of fellows from the National Hockey League if they're not playing tonight watching this game. These guys in the National Hockey League are just great, great sport fans, no matter what the what the game is. They go out to racetrack every now and then, too. There comes Knock, hand it off. Good jump by Benson, the freshman. What a beautiful run to the 36-yard line. A penalty flag is thrown at the 40. Clayton was there trying to open up a hole for him down there. He looked disgusted on the play, and it is against the offense. I think it was on Michael Clayton, or he saw it right there, one of the two. But, you know, that corner cat blitz from Derek Strait and Vincent runs right through it, reminiscent of Derek Sproles. Remember Darren Sproles in that game? That was really the play of the game. Here's straight. Watch him right, right in here. He kind of goes a shoe duster. He goes too low on the play, doesn't get the tackle, and there's the play. Very, very similar to that play when Sproles ran right through that tackle and changed the game for Kansas State. Thank you. 6.56 remaining here in the first half. John Saunders, the gang, of course. Huh. About that. Play at, uh, Penalty at was from the spot, so when they brought the ball back, it was still a first down. Gary, that was one of the best runs past the line Absolutely. of scrimmage that I've seen in a long time. He's got some talent. This, uh, he this is a guy. He Just seems Vincent. to get in a hole and then dance for daylight. You know, he's got that little scoop move between tackles. This is the first time we've seen him in the flesh. He's a dandy. Not got a hurry now. They've had got a little bit of clock trouble no here. No timeouts Clayton's either. got to get over the left side of the formation. Uh-oh. Penalty flight didn't get it off, did he? No, both receivers were moving on the play. And uh, the completion to the running back, Joseph Adai, and so it'll come back. There. Well, Nick Saban just going uh -huh. berserk on the sideline right now. These self-inflicted wounds. I mean, that's just line up in your proper spot. Two receivers shifted on the play just as the ball. Watch the top of your screen right here. Watch how they both shift at the same time. Oh, that that don't work. You can only have one of those guys moving. Thought it was back in Toronto. So you know, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to have a load of lids more, Len. Well, Brent, both these teams haven't played the game since December 6th. That's a month that they've been without playing a football game. You get into a big game like this, little things are off. Receivers aren't used to being contested. They have to take a little time to get up to game speed. The coaches are just having a problem trying to be so detailed about every play, getting it in, and that's the problem with the clock management tonight. Oh, my friend Lynn, standing up for the receivers again. <laughs> Second down, Mock the keeps it, and he crosses the 45-yard line. Funny how it didn't hurt USC's receivers. No, they kind of broke <laughs> they free, to be able to, they? Well, they, old school What was it exactly on. that they did during that month off <laughs> that these fellows haven't? Well, they focused, they focused a little more on catching hey. the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I know many of you, especially in Southern California, wondered how did Lynn Swan handle it? He has been so elegant here in New Orleans and so gracious to both these teams and uh, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, folks. He's not he's not claiming any national championship. He's not bragging about that great coaching effort out there. So it is third down from the 45-yard line and now underneath. First down, and then some as David Jones breaks a tackle and makes it to the 30-yard line. Just slipping one guy out, two receivers come inside, and Matt Mock puts this ball exactly where you have to. Jones, big tight end, fullback, right on that hip, catches it, 
poor tackle in the secondary by Oklahoma, and he turns up and gets positive yards. You know, Mock is a gamer. You watch the guy in practice, and you go, yeah, you know, all right, he looks pretty good. When he gets in the game, he's much more comfortable than he is in practice. We're going to have Clayton throw it. He's going to go to the end zone. Receiver's covered, and it's out of bounds anyway. It'll be second down and ten. Well, Bachelor Bob broke her heart, but uh, look who's back. Meredith. You sex a thing, sex a thing, you got 25 guys to choose from. The Bachelorette season premiere Wednesday, January 14th at 9, 8 Central on ABC. If Bob would have picked her, he'd still be hooked up, I think. <laughs> That's who are the Danielson family all chose, right there. <laughs> Meredith was our winner. Oh, good for you. I was watching an NBA game. <laughs> okay. Second down at 10 at the 30-yard line. High formation look now, a little motion. Henderson with that speed. They hand to Benson. Benson sprints inside the 25. The freshman to the 16, and he looks like he really, he's going to be something. Doesn't he, he really is good. You know, I mean, this guy practiced nine days in spring ball and defense. Nick Saban put him trying to find a spot. Started out the year fourth string, but watch him feel it. Freshman, he went through a spring practice, actually practiced with the team last year in the Cotton Bowl, sat out a year, but he has really taken now, built his way up in a good football player. He's over 100 yards now for the fourth consecutive game. Wow, he has passed Dalton Hilliard's freshman rushing record, so he has put the new standard up for LSU. Here he comes again. Still on his feet. Touchdown, Vincent! Amazing performance! First, he breaks open the SEC title game with that 87-yarder, and now he bolts LSU ahead here with a splendid 18-yard touchdown run. Oh, my! Watch him use the umpire to cut off the last would-be tackler. Sets him inside and then goes around and you can't get there because you see the umpire and you run off him. What a brilliant run. And the extra point is up and good. Ryan Godet makes it a 14-7 game. Well, Herschel Walker exploded in this setting at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Could it be Vincent tonight? He's on his way. And rabbit hunting. There better be a quick rabbit to get away from that young man right down there now. Let me tell you. He doesn't need a gun. He just goes out there and runs him down. They couldn't grab him either. Oklahoma missed the tackle up front, missed the tackle on the second level, and he just ran into the end zone. Jackson with the ball on the tee. And LSU ahead for the second time here tonight. They have Mark Clayton on the field as a return man. Get the ball in his hands any way they can. And he is down at the 14-yard line. There's Brazil, another of the speedsters, coming down with that defensive unit. Man, if he can learn how to catch a football in traffic, he's going to be some dandy, folks. He's one of your four three-runners. Well, coming up on the BMW X3 Halftime Show, John, Terry, and Craig will break down the first half with former Oklahoma head coach Barry Switzer. Plus, we'll go live to Bourbon Street. Man, there were some times if you wanted to talk to Barry, you would go live. To yeah, Bourbon that's Street. right. <laughs> Jason White is 6 for 15 in this football game. Ronald Spain in with that H-back look that time. The inside handoff trying to get the running game going. Jones battles his way out to the 19-yard line. You know, speaking of running backs, I must say this before we get too long into the night, because I'll forget it. Alert, but everyone. Alert. <laughs> this is the Adrian Peterson alert. <laughs> Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. You folks at Norman, you've got a great running back headed your way. At least I hope he's as good as I've been told. But Adrian Peterson, he pulled that OU hat right out of that bag in that, uh, that Army All-Star game yesterday. And he's coming. I believe he can carry that ball about 15, 16 times a game for them. Here's Jones coming back. Ooh, Nothing boy. doing against this front. What a play by Marquise Hill. Man, these two bookends, Marquise Hill and Marcus Spears, you got two guys like that. There's two different styles of defense. One is a one-gap defense up front where you ask your guys up here to just get upfield. Nick Saban doesn't let his defensive lineman go one gap. He says push, cover two gaps. 
That's the style they hit You gotta have strength, you gotta control your offensive linemen. That way you have more guys covering more gaps. That is what he teaches. And they have yielded only 54 yards to Oklahoma in this game. The Sooners' long touchdown set up by a blocked punt. White, good job of the offensive line until then. It broke down. He's kept the ball too long. Good coverage, and Marquise Hill came free on him again with the sack. Wes Sims is the guy who had Marquise Hill on that one. I thought it was decent. I thought it was decent protection that time. You got a blitz coming, four from one side, two from the other. Time, time, time. You can't hold the ball that long. This is a quarterback that isn't used to this type of pressure. It happened in the second half of the season. Marquise Hill made all three tackles in that series. Yeah, and now series. Fergus is backed up in the end zone for Oklahoma. And LSU would like to repay the favor if they can get in on this punt. They'll settle for some field position and a return. Fair catch by Green at midfield. Well, uh, John, Terry, and Craig, what have you got planned for us at halftime? Well, coming up on the BMW X3 halftime report, we'll break it down. The crowd, obviously, in favor of LSU, and they've dominated. Yes, they've dominated the line of scrimmage. If Oklahoma doesn't block a punt, they don't even in this game. And you know what? On that last play, they're Oklahoma. They only get three people out in the route. I'll show you what LSU did on offense that last drive to get in the end zone. Oh, you need to make an adjustment. Plus, we'll be joined by Oklahoma coaching legend, Barry Switzer, Brent. All right, John, make sure you show me that interception by the Packers. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I was busy doing something up here. Mock is back. On the roll, receivers are covered, and so Mock changes direction, and he picks up three yards before he is down. So Mock, who was a sensational running quarterback in high school, and, of course, he suffered that foot injury. He had to rehab that foot. And then, as we told you the story, he selected baseball, Jack. Well, Brent, so how did he end up with, uh, with uh, the LSU Tigers? We'll tell you after this play. Second down, and Mock out of bounds. And, uh, Jack, that was a pretty good phone call that Nick Saban accepted that day. Yes, indeed it was. But Nick Saban got the phone call because he knew of Matt Mock because Matt was playing in the minor league organization for the Lansing Lugnuts when Nick Saban was at Michigan State University. They hit up with a friendship. Nick says he used to go to a lot of the games, and he would watch. And then, when it was time, he decided that he would go and call Nick Saban, and Nick said, come on down to the bayou. And uh, Jack, during that, I think they decided that wasn't a catch over there on the far side, because they brought the ball on back to the line of scrimmage the 47 and the 48 yard line so it will be third and seven good lesson to all the coaches out there be nice to the guys you don't sign they may come back this looks like a blitz look here for there are OU. four wide receivers they come. for lsu and they leave undy alone one of the blitzers changed his mind Derek straight going over but again we've got a penalty flag on the play that, that was, yeah, one of those offensive linemen grabbed one of the blitzers on that play, but that was bad, very bad technique for Oklahoma that time. All-out blitz and let the remaining running back just clean go out that time. Someone is responsible to peel with that butt, with that back. Well, Jimbo Fisher. Now we'll reach into his uh, bag of plays and see what he can come up with here on third and long. LSU coming off its best series of the game, now having some self-inflicted difficulties uh, against the Sooners. There is Jimbo in the LSU coach's box. Someday, he too will become a head coach, but he's very, very comfortable working with uh, Nick Saban, directing the offense. Obviously, uh, Nick Saban is a hands-on defensive coach pretty much leaves Jimbo away after they go over the base game plan. Now Mock is back. Fires down the Clayton over to him. Picked off at the 15-yard line. And Antonio Perkins is out of bounds after the interception. Not particularly a well-thrown ball that no, Brent, time. But not a disaster. When you've had your last punt block and it's third and very long, you're going to throw the ball downfield 
take a shot. If it gets intercepted, you tackle the guy. There's only 53 seconds left in the half. I think it's a good call by Jimbo Fisher. So after the big warning, now on sportsmanlike conduct, is going to be called Bob Stoops. Cale Gundy just took the headset off over there, looking at the head coach. And obviously, it has been called against them after the interception. And uh, Lynn, uh, did you have a, a good view of that? I had a great view of it. One of the players on the bench just came onto the field and was yelling, probably berating one of the players from LSU on the field right in front of the official. And the flag just flew right out of his pocket. Oh, then, uh, then that's a good call if that's what happened out there. No question of it. You can't have that, right, Gary? Bobby threw his headset down, and he must not have seen it as clear as Lynn because right now he might be working for the next one. But with 53 seconds to go, this half is over. So we're at the top of the hour. LSU and Oklahoma at the Nokia Sugar Bowl for the BCS National Championship. Seven-point lead. LSU with some personnel problems, but now the 12th man clears the field in time. Here's Jones going nowhere. Stoned by Eric Alexander, the senior from Fort Arthur, Texas. And coaches will tell you the most improved defensive player on their team is number 27. One of the keys to this great defense was Alexander's move from safety, where he was a four-year, actually a three-year player trying to find the field. LSU fans know he was a terror on special teams, but you move an average safety up the linebacker and he's a fast linebacker he's making plays all over the field how tough is it getting for OU's offense Chris Chester coming off many injuries now checks in and they're going to just run this clock out they are content to go on into the locker room trailing by seven points Ravale and the defense did a great check in the shotgun to open up the second half off the fake He'll keep the ball, and he is down at the 18-yard line. Marcus Spears, the junior from Baton Rouge, making the stop for the Tigers. All right, come on now, Oklahoma. You, you can't, offensive line cannot hold up that long. You have to go out, throw the little short options. You have to attack them quickly. You don't have time to run these type of plays 15, 25 yards downfield. Establish the short passing game, hit the little options, and then maybe something else will open up. Second down and 13 for our Heisman Trophy winner. Intercepted. And LSU has scored on the Marcus Spears interception, the second play of the second half. And suddenly, the Sooners are down two touchdowns. That was reminiscent of what happened back in Kansas City against Kansas State. Yeah, this time it was a defensive end. Marcus Spears, he was one of the hot, hottest, highest recruited athletes in the South, a tremendous basketball player. He drops from the defensive end position and gets the pick. O'Day tacks on the extra point. And Jason White. Back of the gun, didn't see him working there, was looking for Wilson on the cut, and Spears takes it to the end zone. What a defense. defensive touchdowns this season. And he balked at being moved to the defensive side of the ball. He played one whole year here at LSU at tight end, but I think Nick moved him to the right spot. This one will be returned by Clayton. And a lateral to Bradley, and it is eaten up. Down at the five-yard line, and White, Chad White, number 43, was not to be fooled on the trickery by the Sooners. Boy, are they on their game. LSU is on top of their football game. 
a reverse, a pitch, you come running down on it, one blink, one side, and then a head-up tackle on Bradley. It's all uphill now for Jason White and the Sooner offense. Jason is only 6 of 16 throwing the ball. They keep Ronalds in. Line up with a fullback. Directly in front of the running back at this formation. There's Jones. Nothing doing against that defensive front. Let's go back to the interception, Gary. You know, we uh, Jack told you what it was like in a NFL locker room at halftime, he said. But uh, here's what it's like to play against an NFL pass defense because you got defensive linemen picking off passes. They didn't used to do that when I played. This is the new style of defense. Gary wants to outlaw it. <laughs> exactly. It's not American. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> every they all zone blitz. Every guy that everybody, anybody that ever played quarterback, write your congressman today. <laughs> Second down. Trying to put it in Wilson's hands and nothing doing against this savage defense. If things continue right now, Gary, and I think you would agree with me, LSU is playing for folks against USC oh, yeah. with this defensive performance here. I don't, I don't want to write off Oklahoma yet this football game. You said it the right way. If things continue, but you know, Michigan got a little bit, excuse me, USC got a bit of a walkover in that football game. Michigan just didn't play their game that day, and you're seeing a defense. I don't know. This is as good a defense as I've seen all year. Third and nine. Well, complete. Wilson breaks free, but only briefly to the 43-yard line as Jack Hunt. Safety there to help out with Webster, but it is a 33-yard gain. Wilson shaken up on the play. He might have to come to the sideline. Middle read this time. Gets inside Randall Gay, the nickelback, and look at that throw. Jason White's best throw of the football game. Gets it inside, and Jason White, by the way, also came up limping after that play. Wilson with the shoulder, or looks like, and Jason with the knee, or foot, hip, or something, because he was left. So Saban's defense dominating Clayton on the end of round. But look how they hold their position and stretch that play out. But then with Clayton's great speed, he gets the first down and gets the corner turn coming back on a one-man reverse. Hey, this is a great answer from Oklahoma now. Third and long, Jason White hits the first down. Now on the reverse. The big players for Oklahoma. White hits the first down pass, and now Clayton against a perfectly defense sweep from the wide receiver. His great athletic ability gets something out of nothing. 15 yards on that play. The ball at the 42-yard line, first and 10 for White and the Sooners. This is what I'm looking for from Oklahoma. Do they have that heart of a champion? Can they pick it up in this game? Jones and Peoples are the wideouts over the right, and Jones comes through the formation to the left. So Webster backs off from the bump and run. They throw a screen to Jones on the other side, and it was read brilliantly by Lionel Turner. So, you know, we have talked to Nick Saban about a lot of things, including his defensive philosophy. I think you win or lose every down on defense based on the next down and distance situation that you create uh, because the offense will become more predictable for you if you're in a positive down and distance situation defensively. And he created a second and 10 with that well-read screen pass that time. Four receivers, the tight end coming in as an H back and an inside handoff to Jones, but Jones makes the most of it inside the 40-yard line before Melvin Oliver makes the stop for the Tigers. When you talk to a lot of defensive coordinators around college football, they felt that the Achilles heel for Oklahoma was their offensive line was a finesse offensive line. A lot of teams felt they knew how to stop them, just didn't have the athletes to stop them. Now these last two games, Kansas State and now LSU have enough athletes to match up, and they're forcing that Oklahoma offensive line to come through. Kevin White has to call on his front guys to start making some plays. Travis Wilson came off the field. He tried it on a play. 
Now he is back over on the sideline. White hits Donnelly. Donnelly is down close to the 30-yard line, but there is a flag. I think it was the delay of game. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, and then third down. Well, uh, you know, we had Saban mic'd up at practice in Baton Rouge, and uh, he's worth a listen all the time. Blitz got out man. Give that one to the defensive coaching staff for LSU. You are seeing one example after another of why Saban is such a hot prospect in the National Football League. Oh boy, Ronaldo works. That's who you have to block. When you're the only running back, you have to block the middle linebacker. That's a complete bust. I, I, I got to take back what I said, Brent. That is a complete bust by the running back for Oklahoma. He should have been blocked. Now that man right there, Nick Saban, he has the biggest... You can't really say wager, can you, with the NCAA? But anyway, if he wins this game, he gets $1 more than the highest salary coach in college football. He has it in his contract. And guess who the highest salary is? On the other sideline at $2.5 million, Mr. Bob Stoops. And right now, Nick Saban is headed for a big, big payday. I talked to the Powers down at Baton Rouge a couple of nights ago. They think that they have him almost linked to a long-term contract they are not going to let the NFL have him without a fight. And Green did not fair catch it, so he's ripped down at the 11-yard line. So again, it is the special teams trying to hold Oklahoma in the football game. That was Will Peoples. A little bit. He's a little more agile. A little bit better runner because of Jason White's knee injuries. I'm not pushing for it. I'm just saying if they decide to go in that direction, it would give them a little more mobility at the quarterback spot. Speaking of mobility, the running back of this game so far is number 25, Justin Benson, the freshman from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Paul Carrier that time, and a reminder now the college basketball season in full swing. And Big Monday on ESPN, 7 Eastern, Texas against Providence. Man, what's it like watching Dickie be in high definition? Ooh, that's got to be scary. <laughs> then at 9, it's Kansas, Colorado. Big Bundy. Yeah, you're right. On ESPN. Stereo already is scary. Oh, yeah, baby. There's a play fake and Muck in trouble. Harris was closing in, and he's still able to complete the pass as he hit Eric Edwards, his tight end that time, and Derek Strait makes the stop. Yeah, another one of those situations now. And if I was Jimbo Fisher, offensive coordinator for LSU, I'd be very careful here right now. You got this game well in hand. Your defense is controlling. You don't want to make a critical mistake right now. Some type of draw, some type of quick screen, maybe a wide receiver screen. Nothing over the middle where you lose track of a linebacker or a defensive end. And they have Joseph Adai. Veteran running back to slip him into the formation, just what you suggested, and they pick him up for the first down before Strait can bust him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. So there was no risk on that play. Right. They stayed out of the middle, and Mock was efficient for 13 yards. Boy, I'll tell you, Matt Mock, I really love his delivery. No wasted motion, very quick, very much like a catcher. Just flicks it off his ear, just zips it right out there. Very impressive. He's 24 years old, like you've mentioned. Very comfortable. You know that injury he had last spring? He looks more comfortable as a passer now. And I think that spring of not being able to scramble helped him. It did, Gary. And they say that he stayed in the pocket down there in spring practice a lot, just because of what you say. He wanted to run the draw, and he slipped on the surface that time. And Harris was able to take him down at the 30-yard line. And there is Tommy Harris, who also faces the decision to whether or not come back to Oklahoma. He'll announce his decision after the game. And uh, there's a very good possibility that Tommy will move on because so many scouts like him. Uh, anytime you get a defensive tackle with 4.67 speed, right. you've got to be impressed that Tommy, the recent winner of the Lombardi Trophy, they, they, they won so much hard work. They're going to have to build a new wing at the Hall of Fame in Norman for all of the awards 
that this defense and of course the Heisman Trophy that these Sooners have picked up and right now they'd like to play a little bit better against LSU. Mock on the roll takes off again crosses the 40 short of the first down he is down at the uh, 43 yard line and 11 yard run but let me take you to the list of award winners Jason of course you know he also won the O'Brien the AP player of the year Teddy Lehman the Butkus and the Bednarik and uh, Derek Strait he won the Thorpe and the Nagurski Harris we just told you that and Bob Stoops uh, on one of the polls was a coach of the year I think on another one I think Nick Saban actually won the award too so uh, the Sooners cleaning up in the hardware but uh, not closing out the season on a strong note, at least so far, after being beaten 35-7 by K-State and now trailing LSU by two touchdowns. Here comes Skylar Green, first down, and Strait makes still another tackle for the defense. I am mentioning Derek Strait's name too often. I should be mentioning the defensive front. So let's talk about the LSU offensive line for a moment. Let's talk about Wilkerson, made a bad mistake early in the game. He's been efficient ever since. Peterman and Livings are the guards alongside of him, and Reed and Whitworth are those tackles. Now, I looked up the penalties on these fellas. Whitworth, only six this year. Livings, only four this year. And uh, Reed, the right tackle, he's a 3.9 student in a county. This is a very good offensive line. And Mouth, very adeptly stepped away from heat that time to the 50 carry. That's really the play of the game for Matt Mock right there in my mind. That's exactly what Jimbo Fisher and, and Nick Saban told us they really love about Mock. He saves us. He doesn't make the dumb play. He knows he's got a great defense to play with. So on that play, he's under pressure. He just doesn't lob it downfield. He goes up inside, and instead of having first and 10 or an interception or a sack way back there, he's got second and seven. Second and seven is man -tier. Harsha Jackson checks back in. Second down. Mock zips it complete to Clayton. There's a first down inside the 35. What a job Matt Mock is doing in this game. And, uh, well, let's take a closer look at this young man. My hometown is Jasper, Indiana. My favorite movie is Fletch. My favorite musical group would be U2. Uh, My favorite sports team would be the uh, Chicago Cubs. Uh, they took a chance on me. Probably didn't work out, but uh, it was uh, great being a part of that organization. Never had a chance to catch Mark Pryor. That's one of the things I asked him when I was visiting down in, uh, in Baton Rouge. It is, uh, it is so ironic for me that the only national championship won by LSU some 40-some years ago, Billy Cannon was the star of that team, and he went on to become a dentist. And now Mock is following in the same vein on a Benson one-yard run at that time as we check in down below with Lynn Swan. Lynn? Well, Brent, the ADP National Champion Trophy is right here. This crystal football has been around for 18 years, has always been associated with the coaches poll. Traveled just over 25,000 miles here, this year, and there's only one team that has four of these sitting in his trophy case already, and that would be the University of Miami. However, if the score holds, LSU is looking at their second national championship and a little crystal to their own palace. We got the right man watching that trophy. Never saw him drop a ball when he got his two hands on it. Here comes Mauk now taking off the right side. This will be a third down coming up. And again, it was straight making the stop. And uh, let's go down now to Jack. Well, Brent, we watched the way this offense for LSU is operating, and it's the epitome of what Jimbo Fisher has explained to them. He says, we want you to play with boys. This is accepted the off the defense for Oklahoma is very good, and they're going to get you once in a while. He said, don't make a play to win the game. Just go out and play the game. Here's the third down and six. Jimbo's call is on the field. Now it's up to Mock to orchestrate it. Clayton goes back over to the short side on the right. Mock straight back. Offensive line gives him plenty of time. Nice grab. Here comes Skyler Green, and he's out of bounds. At the five-yard line, it'll be first and goal. Poole getting him out of bounds, but LSU is in business again, and here come the Tigers. Wow, that was on Derek Strait that time. He had Skyler Green man-to-man. -man. It was a loop pass. You come inside and you loop back out. It's a predetermined option to the outside. Everyone knows what's going on. You come in, you fake hard inside, and that time Derek Strait could not handle Skyler Green. Skyler Green is very impressive with his speed. Jerry, you mentioned third down. That was third and six and a 23-yard game. Their first touchdown of the game, third and two. They are dominating. Justin Vincent is the running back. Got the call. 
tiptoes inside the five-yard line as the Sooners jam the front. You can always tell you're doing a good job against Oklahoma's defense when you don't hear Teddy Lehman's name a lot. You really have to scheme to keep that guy. He's like a wild card. He's like a rover, and he has not been in any plays tonight. Passing game, he can't get there. Running game, he's there. He's bouncing it outside, but LSU has schemed him out of this game. Second down and goal. Vincent DeLone running back. Henderson through the formation. Mock rolls to the right. Pump fake. Keeps it out of bounds. Just shy of the five-yard line. So it'll be third down coming up for LSU. And a quick reminder that uh, you've never been inside the FBI. You've never been inside the mob until now. So get ready to cross over. The jailbreak screen down here on third down. Let's see if they can get one in. It will be safe. Remember, a field goal makes it more than a two-possession game with a 17-point lead. Oh, they've gone to four wideouts. And then they'll bring Henderson over to the left side and knock a roll hard in that direction. And this one did not work out. It's field goal time for Nick Saban at LSU. Dan Cody, along with Garon Allen, making the stop for the Sooners. Up and silly. Great drive by LSU. Managed very well by Moff. He scrambled when he had to. He hit the passes when he had to. And when he had to, he just kept the ball and made sure the field goal was alive. So here's Ryan Godet, who took over, kicking the field goals for Chris Jackson in the SEC Championship game in Atlanta. Hit two field goals against the Bulldogs. And he's got this one. There's a penalty flag. The field goal is signaled good. But there is a penalty and we'll get this sorted out there's a 27 yard field goal oh that's big I'd say you wonder if Oklahoma can spring somebody either directly up the middle which frequently is the easiest way to block a field goal those edge rushers have a terrible time sometimes get around that corner and lay it out there are two penalties one during the play one after the play was over during the play holding on the offense after the play was over personal foul on the offense both penalties will be enforced they'll have to punt bring the punter on yep they're gonna have to punt now one thing about uh, Donnie Jones he can nail it inside the 20 yard line he has been lethal doing that this season right now LSU is discombobulated they got half their field goal team out half their punt team the worst thing would not be just to take a five yard penalty and calm down on this thing I'm surprised they're trying this long field goal Fifty-two and a half yards. Lane Besh is the holder. It's a fake. They throw out of it, and wide open is David Jones. Can you believe it? That's why they were taking so much time. What a play. And they pull the fake field goal. But remember now, it's a 29-yard gain. Right. They were down to the five-yard line at first and goal well, so they improved their field position pop says i'm supposed to do that that's the type of play i would call i haven't seen this ever it's one of the great plays a penalty after a field goal you get the split receiver jones comes out runs down he has to score because it was first and goal and he does not get in but they got field position out of him sooner fans take a big deep breath still hanging in Tonight, only 31 rushing, 61 passing against this fierce LSU team. From the end zone, going for it all, and Clayton couldn't quite get to it. So the FedEx ground air stats. We take a look at it, and you can see the air being won by LSU, dominated by the Tigers. And, uh, we don't have to tell you what the ground looks like. We already spoke about that. Yeah. Boy, those two packages from Oklahoma didn't get there, did they? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> those Christmas presents didn't get there from Oklahoma. <laughs> 
second down <laughs> and ten. Conley switches to the left side of the formation. Keeping Runnels in because of the intense pressure all night long. Trying to get a running game going. You can see Carter trying to lead the way in the middle as we check in now on the deep rushing playbook. Well, when you run the spread, and Brent talked about bringing in the running quarterback. Look what happens when you don't have a running quarterback. The defensive end doesn't respect the quarterback keep. He just cuts around the backside, tackles the ball carry. I don't care, Jason. You want to keep it and run it? We'll tackle you. You got to have that extra runner when you're in that shotgun and run the spread. The Tigers looking down at third down and six here for the Sooners. The Sooners are three of nine on third downs here this evening. Saban's defense has him six yards away. Jason dances, tries to find an open receiver. Clayton on a comeback. And he's got his first down. I think they had a lineman downfield, an illegal lineman downfield. I think it was Wes Sims. Tremendous coverage. I, I, I'm telling you, if you've got people that can cover like this, I don't care if you have two Heisman trophies. Watch these guys cover. You show me where to throw the ball. Go ahead. Come on, Oklahoma fans. Tell Jason where to throw the ball. Can you throw it to this guy? No. How about that? No. How about this guy? Any one of these three guys you'd like to try to throw the ball to? I don't think so. Excellent. You know, Gary, we started this broadcast with a piece of sound with Nick Saban talking about the bump and run. And all night long, they have used that defense, crossing those wideouts. And you saw Nick hands-on coaching the defensive backs in Baton Rouge teaching them how he wants them to do it. The great coaches are great teachers, or they have great teachers working with them, but they all get it done in some manner. And Nick Saban, out of West Virginia, I've got a great story regarding the Stoops family I want to get to here a little bit later. Third down, and from the end zone, White, this one could almost be picked off Jones. I mean, he... Daniels had him covered like a blanket. I'm Gary, there was just nothing doing over. There was no daylight, nothing going. I'm really impressed with Daniels. You know, he started off at safety because of Leron Landry. He got the move to corner. Look at this guy. He's tall. He looks at the hips. He tracks him. He gets his hands on him. Turns back for the football. He doesn't panic. No interference call. Daniels is the guy that gave up his red shirt in the SEC championship a couple years ago for one play. That's a team player. Skyler Green. Standing, 45-yard line, Blake Ferguson near that end line. Booms it out. This is returnable. Catches it back at the 38-yard line. Searches for a crease. Stumbling. And back to the 34-yard line. Teddy Lehman. Makes the tackle, but the LSU offense is in good shape again. Forgive Skyler Green if he's just learning the role of kick returns, guys. You see, he was a quarterback at Higgins High in Marrero, Louisiana. And while he was a quarterback, he only returned two punts in his entire career. He's acquired the skill set pretty well. <laughs> Probably for touchdowns with that speed, Jack from the eye formation. They're going to bring him on the end around now and nothing to do with that time because Jonathan Jackson, the junior from Houston, is able to make the play. Jonathan Jackson, I was mentioning his name almost every play at the Rose Bowl last year when they beat Washington State. And I believe that might be the first time that I've mentioned it here tonight just to give you an idea of the efficiency on both sides of the ball by this LSU team. They left nothing to detail. Yesterday when we were here in our final setup, and Nick Saban was going through his final walkthrough. I have never, ever seen a team as prepared. They just send their units out onto the field. I mean, there's nothing that goes on, basically. He just wants the kick team guys. He makes the substitution packages. And, man, it was like clockwork watching this bunch. Coming in underneath the Jones again, just short of the 30-yard line. Oklahoma's defense is so distorted. That's such a... 79 yards of offense. Amazing. Back on the field defensively against... Matt Mock of the LSU Tigers, who now have a third down. Oklahoma's only touchdown set up by a blocked punt, which will be covered inside the five-yard line. It's four plays to get it in. 
Now Mox standing tall, fires intercepted. Bad decision on his part. Picked off now by Brodney Poole. And Poole, looking for somebody to lateral to, finally takes it down inside the 30-yard line. That's his seventh interception of the season. He leads the OU defense. And finally, a spark for Oklahoma. And maybe we can get something going. Yeah, it's one of the things that LSU had to tell Matt Mock and the change of the quarter. If it's there, go for it. But make sure you throw under timing. Don't throw this ball over the middle off balance. He throws late off balance, and that ball is just eaten up, and Oklahoma stays in this football game. The missed field goal, and now the interception. It's anybody's football game. Now let's see if OU can cash in on it. There is Poole, having picked off his seventh pass of the season. White comes up under center. Jones is running back. There's the pitch to Jones, and he is him back in. Beautiful defense by Daniels. Gary, you have talked about Travis Daniels, but he was so disciplined that time from the cornerback spot, he saw the possibility of a pitch. Instead of coming hell for leather for the running back, he stayed right there like he's taught to do and forced the back inside the truck. Man, that was, what an awesome looking defense well, well, this is. Not only that, it's a smart defense. He knows the quarterback's not going to keep the ball. He follows his game plan, and he does what he's supposed to do. Let the quarterback run. Go for the pitch man. I think it have been second and long, and they got Jason White back in that shotgun. They work a twist. They hit him on a release. There he is again. Incomplete, and Jason White has taken another hit as Clayton is up against Daniels, and Travis gets the best of it. That lineman was zoned. Daniels plays the zone. Remember, he was the straight safety when the season started. This guy is a big time. But remember, the other corner is the All-American. Webster's the All-American. Watch this. Drops in zone, reads the quarterback, and then gets back on the play. Runs it. Watch it. Jams, looks in, looks in, gives ground, gives ground, relax, and tips the ball. That's wonderful pass. That's two sensational plays in a row. And... Uh, uh, that is Kristen Pittman, I believe, the young man who was down on the 33-yard line. But the pressure again. Four down territory. They need a touchdown. They don't have to get it all of it on third down. The LSU backs the safety out. Now he looks like he's coming, and he is coming. Jason White going to go for the home run. Middle knocked away the last moment by the nickelback randall gay making still another big play what a defensive backfield saban has put together randall gay was the starter he was the starting cornerback when travis daniels played safety he comes on clayton the ball is slightly underthrown again you see gay he's able to just bat it down he doesn't panic he's used to playing bump and run coverage and he knocks it down wonderful play and Oklahoma will go for it on fourth down now they must get inside the 21 yard line for a first down LSU that defense now looks at a fourth and 11 and here they come again on white he'll fire middle Clayton reaches out and makes the catch for the first down at the 11 yard line a wonderfully athletic play by Mark Clayton, who has a 38-inch vertical leap, the best on the OU team. This matchup on the blitz against Jack Hunt worked early in the game, and they come back to it late in the football game. That's the only time Clayton's really had his way when he's been matched up against Jake, Jack Hunt. Give the offensive line credit for Oklahoma. It was an all-out blitz, and they blocked it. Now if they can afford to send Runnels out, sometimes he breaks free down close to the end zone. But he is set up in the fullback on the straight eye with Jones behind him. Sooner's looking for a touchdown to get back in this thing. Jones looking for that corner. Breaks free and then muscles down close to the five-yard line. That was a big-time play for Jason White. He stood in there the play before on third down. If you look at Jason, uh, 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 Juan Jones, excuse me. Uh, he has led this team in rushing yards and... TDs, 26 career games and 25 career touchdowns. He struck on that opening drive against Kansas State, and since then, it has been struggle city for the OU offense. Now they're looking down at second down and five. Runnels still in as the fullback in front of Jones. Play fake, throwing. It is complete. 
And Reynolds dives for the flag this time, but he is just short of it. Reynolds thought he had it. Reynolds thought he got the pylon. And I told you about him slipping out sometimes for that backfield. It has been a wonderful play through this season for Oklahoma. Lionel Taylor, the middle linebacker, has the fullback sliding out here. It looks like his foot came, yes, his foot came out of bounds right about there, just before he hit the pylon. The here it is, hit the first pylon. and There's goal. The foot. Yes, good call. First and goal, Jones is behind Runnels. They switch the power over to the left side of his formation. Jason trips, going to keep it, stumbling, can't get there. Too much speed on that D, and Oliver is allowed to close. Jason had no chance once he slipped, and he gave back four yards. And he missed the handoff on the play. I don't know if he slipped before the handoff or after the handoff, but he misses the handoff. Watch as he turns here. Yes, he slips before. He might have got his foot stepped on, and then he knew he was going to get eaten up on the play. He was never going to get it outside of Melvin Oliver. Peoples on as a wide receiver. And so, look at the substitution package for LSU. Four different defensive players dash onto the field after Oklahoma sends in its substitutes. Right back in that passing shotgun formation. Jones slipping to the right. Fake. Quarterback draw. Dives toward the end zone. Just short of it. That's and it will be third down and goal. But that was a good call. Absolutely. That's a great call. That's one of those calls you would never expect. Jason White is showing his heart in his football game. He's been limping all game. Brent mentioned the two surgical knees he had. Got both of those just running. Not even hit on either one of those plays early in his career. Chris Chester Four comes down in as a, uh, as a tight end to help lead the way. This will be a jumbo formation. Signal coming in from the sideline. This could make a whale of an ending here to the Nokia Sugar Bowl if Oklahoma can battle their way in. Jones! his way in. Touchdown, OU! <laughs> Will now. Gary, look what we've got here. And Carlo. Corey Holden try to make this a seven-point game. 74 extra points for him, and there's the young man who's done all the touchdowns, scoring for the Sooners. That bad play by Matt Mock. You can't give up the ball when you're controlling the football game, and it gave the other team life. Inside move against Hunt. That's the matchup that Jason White has made before and then the running play after the quarterback draw by Jason White to get back in the football game. Preparing for winter, these docile little fellows. And Skyler takes a knee in the end zone. Well, Bachelor Bob broke her heart. You sex a thing, sex a thing, you. But Meredith Knight on the Oklahoma sideline as Mouth and LSU bring it out on first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Fake to Benson. Roll left. Dropped. It'll be second down and 10. During the commercial, this was the Oklahoma sideline, and they were dancing to the OU band right behind them. There in the corner. Trying to get their fans back in the thick of it, and I see an awful lot of folks wearing red on their feet right now as they have closed back to within seven, and they look at a second and ten. That was that gimme pass that they ran before when he threw the comeback. This time he short-armed it, did Matt Mock, and threw it right in the ground. It was a tough catch. The last time Oklahoma scored a touchdown, LSU answered with their own touchdown. Timeout. LSU, they burn one here. Come back soon? As soon as I can. I'll use my Miles card. I'll use my Miles card. I'm back. 
With most miles programs, it takes a long time to earn a free flight. Pontiac High Performance Drive Summary. Now, this is LSU's last three possessions. It hasn't been pretty. Two interceptions. Remember, this is where they got the field goal and had it taken off the board. So there's three points right there. And the last three possessions have gotten Oklahoma back in the football game. Now, OU looking for a big play on defense. And who bigger than Tommy Harris? We asked him about his excitement about playing football. Every time I see off of the line, it's just so fun to be out there again. And I just get happy. I get excited. And it's like uh, a parent telling you about to go to like Six Flags or Astro World and you can't sleep the night before. You're just so anxious. That's how I feel about the game. Get excited now, Tommy. It's second down and 10. 21-14 Tigers toss Benson. Benson looking for daylight is cut off and thrown down at the 16-yard line. And suddenly that defense is coming alive. Allen was there and Dvorak also helping out. Well, that missed pass by Matt Mock on first down got LSU behind the down and distance. We are Nick Saban say we like to have the down and distance in our favor. Well, on the other side, you have the ASCII Oklahoma coaches, they like the same thing. When you miss that first down pass, get nothing. All of a sudden, that offense doesn't look so good. Remember, your quarterback, the last two passes he's thrown, a wrong-footed interception over the middle, and he short-armed a short pass to the outside. Dime look with three down linemen for Oklahoma. Mount stands in, in trouble. Cody had a hand on him. Came up firing, and he saved a huge loss on that play. Big Dan Cody came right over the top and had a hand on him, and Mount pulled away and threw the incompletion. Well, you got to admire this front. 39 sacks. These guys have come all year. Whitworth's doing a good job on Cody. Look at that balance. Good athlete, then just gets rid of it to save the distance. But boy, Oklahoma, the heart of a champion right now. Got the crowd against them. It's a big LSU crowd, and they're fighting back. Jones back to punt. He's had one block tonight. Perkins is standing on his own 45-yard line. You're not seeing those wide splits anymore. They got that one blocked. They drive Perkins back to the 39. He spins free. And then crashes into two defenders, bringing the ball back to the 41-yard line. Well, this march on ABC for the first time ever, Stephen King brings you a weekly television series. Stephen King's Kingdom Hospital premieres Wednesday, March 3rd, on ABC. Let's keep an eye on Jason White now. First series since he had that toe all taped up. He doesn't have great mobility to begin with. Now he's got that toe to deal with. They put him up under center. Clayton on the end around, swings behind Jones. Clayton dashes for daylight and gets close to 10 yards on that play as Jack Hunt makes the stop. Boy, the go-to players for Oklahoma have come through. You could tell the way Perkins ran that ball on that punt return. Dan Cody almost getting that sack. Jason White hitting that big fourth down play. Clayton making that big fourth down catch. The big players for Oklahoma are starting to make big plays. Joe Major, he was very close. As you can see, according to our yellow line, he's just that short. So it will be second down for Stoops and OU. Now, normally, you would think Oklahoma would toss one deep here. But the way they've been having trouble running the ball on short yardage, they may try to run the ball twice and make sure they get this first down. White looks over at the sideline. As the play call. Twenty-one fourteen, LSU leading. They were up 21-7. An interception led to an Oklahoma touchdown. Donnelly over to the right side of the formation. Runnels still in there as the lead fullback. He's played most of this game. Flag prior to the snap. And so this will come back five yards against Oklahoma. And uh, so they turn a, almost a gimme into an adventure here. Offense, five-yard penalty. 
Live here in New Orleans at the BCS Championship game at the Nokia Sugar Bowl between Oklahoma and L. Clayton is actually their leading rusher with 36 yards now on that end around. Second down, and here comes their leading rusher again. Fumble the ball out of bounds. Oklahoma football. No first down on the play, and third down is coming up. One of the advantages that LSU has in defensing this particular Oklahoma offense at this stage right now, Oklahoma has become very predictable. They don't throw to the tight end anymore. Lance Donnelly is not even in it. He splits out. He's in there every, every play. They don't even look at him. The quarterback can't get out of the pocket. They become predictable, and that's why LSU has been able to stop them. They know where the attack is coming from. And a fresh Marcus Spears checks into that defensive line. Four-man rush with a twist. Deflected incomplete by Marquise Hill. Hill on the twist, coming free. Knocked it back. That was a huge penalty for Oklahoma. They're going to have to punt the ball here. 8.25 left of the ball game. You can see him. There's the star of the game so far. Oh, it was the other, the other one coming around this time. They're both good. They're both big. And they both can put their hands up. Ferguson back to punt. And now it is Skylar Green's turn. They go for the fair catch. Hopes it goes into the end zone, and it does. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. 8.17 to go here at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. It's 21-14. The Tigers up seven. Michael Clayton, number 14. One of his big guys. He's been rather quiet here so far. Play fake to Benson again. Rolling right. Receivers covered. Mock takes it off, and he's down to the 27. Now, speaking of Michael Clayton, we talked about the strength of the LSU offense. Games are won off big plays, and when you have six to eight, six big play guys out there on the field, it's like your chances of winning goes up. And uh, I mean, from our receiving core to our running backs, all guys who once they get the ball, they can take it a distance. And which of these teams now will come up with the next big play, which could be the biggest of the night? Michael Clayton out as a wideout here on second down. Now using the freshman, and Allen was in on top of him in a heartbeat. Didn't have a chance as Jackson came in and made the play. LSU is a little gun shy about throwing the ball right now. Oklahoma is squatting on all the routes. They're daring them to throw deep. But Mock is two for five for 18 yards and, is, and an interception in his last five passes. He's missed a couple easy ones. He's made a bad couple bad mental mistakes and got it Oklahoma back in the football game. It looks like Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban don't feel good about throwing the ball right now. Third down and five. Three wide receivers for Mock. He'll take off and see if he can run for it. Stumbles and uh, short of that first down, I believe, which would force Saban to punt. Yeah, that, that field, that's a turf. That's the second time. Turf once for Jason White. Now the turf for Matt Mock. Yeah, Nick knew he had a first down. Bob Stoops right now. Brent Venables is feeling good about their defense. They're squatting on the routes. They feel they got a quarterback that's aiming the ball, and they feel good about playing pass defense. Perkins, standing back on his own 30-yard line. Donnie Jones out of Baton Rouge. Straightening out a blocking assignment. Remember, the Sooners have blocked one punt already tonight. They're going to bring the clock down. They zero it out. That's not where you want to take a five-yard penalty. I know he's a good punter, but he's not this good. That's right. LSU had not had a punt block all year. They come into this football game, use the spread punt, get one blocked, and all of a sudden they start worrying a little bit, making a few too many calls, and they burn five yards. Now Saban and his staff start to feel the heat. Oklahoma climbing back into this. High snap is pulled down. Remember, it's a new snapper here. Long snapper was suspended for the game. There's the third catch at the 39-yard line. 
That's where Jason White and Oklahoma will have it. Trailing by seven in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Great stories in college football. He's number 93 of the LSU Tigers. Chad Lavalle could not get his grades, could not get the test scores up, so he worked as a prison guard for one year. Kept trying, kept trying, made it. Now he's one of the best defensive linemen in the country, and he is looking to make a play here now. First down and 10. You can see him right over Carter's nose, man. He's going to war. Time to battle in, gets forced back out. Pass is complete. We asked Lavalle about his strengths as a lineman. I'm not one of those guys that, like I said, just knock someone off the ball. I mean, I can't do it at times, but uh, I try to use my speed and quickness to my advantage, you know, keep keep the linemen on their heels, because, you know, they'll be expecting that, and then I'll counter that with something else. He was drawing a lot of attention that time, and Shasha, number 70, who's had 18 consecutive starts, did a great job of blocking on him. And this time, Jones, first down, Oklahoma. That was impressive. When you try to stop the Oklahoma running game, you know they like to run off the edge. Sweeps, off tackle, LSU game planned it. Now watch them run outside. Good block by Sims, missed tackle, Alexander misses the tackle, and they get a first down. With under five minutes to go now, you got to believe that Oklahoma's thinking it's four down territory the rest of the game. They cross midfield. Donnelly, the H-back clears. Blocked. Incomplete, and the offensive line had done a superb job of keeping the scrimmage line clean that time. As, Gary, we take a look at our Nokia's best yards offense for Oklahoma and 318 for LSU. Bradley is in the game as a wideout. He goes out to the right. Clayton in motion, trying to see what he will draw. There's a penalty flag on this play. The throw is in underneath to Runnels. Runnels picks up first down yardage, but there is a penalty. The linesman threw it on the near side, directly in front of the Oklahoma bench. And I don't think the referee even knows there's a penalty. He signaled first down. Well, that play will stand. That's an offside against LSU, and uh, let's take a closer look at Bob Stoops. My hometown is Youngstown, Ohio. My favorite athlete of all time, uh, Muhammad Ali, because of his fierce competitiveness, his great will to win, and look at the humanitarian he is. Favorite movie, uh, Cool Hand Luke. Favorite food, steak. Uh, I don't need to explain that, do I? <laughs> you know, folks, we get a very low rating in Youngstown tonight, because every time I turned around here in New Orleans, I was meeting a Stoops relative. You know, I think everybody from the town of Youngstown is down here tonight, pulling for the Stoops. I'm going to tell that Nick Saban story before the night's over. First down and 10. White starts Clayton in motion through the formation. Now Jones dashing for daylight to the 28-yard line. And Kewan Jones becoming the running back before Alexander brings him down. All right, Saban was an assistant coach at West Virginia. Youngstown became the team, the town, in his recruiting area. I said, is there any background with the Stoops family? He said, well, I'll tell you the truth, Bobby had already gone to, uh, to Iowa to play. I knew Mike a little bit, but he said, I would go in, and he had an uncle coached over, I believe it was at South High, and he said, we played Jim Rummy down in the boiler room until practice started. He said, I go way back with the Stoops family. Here comes Jones across the 25-yard line, and that's a first down. And Gary, Oklahoma has got it going ever since that interception. Yes, and also this offensive line, who we've questioned, can they be tough enough, can they be strong enough to run the ball against this great rush defense from LSU? They're doing it. They're blowing the LSU line off. Missed tackles, arm tackles now. It looks like the team that looks gassed right now is LSU, as Oklahoma is able to run the ball, control it with short pass and play action pass. Ronaldo works and a timeout called by Oklahoma. 341. Just any of Jason's games. Jason and he are very good friends and Brian suffers from brain cancer. In fact, Jason used to drive him to OU Hoops games. The first person that he called after he won the Heisman Trophy was Brian Stewart. And Brian is here tonight to cheer on Jason White. Yeah, what a wonderful uh, story and a relationship that those two guys have. Jason said he used him as inspiration 
Uh, Jack, after he underwent knee surgery in each of those two years, he said, look, if my friend can keep going with all those brain surgeries, I can certainly do it. And now it is first down and 10 for Oklahoma. They are inside the 25-yard line. Jones is back in as the running back, and Runnels stays right where he is as the protector. He'll lead Jones to the hole. Beautiful block by Runnels. Runnels, ladies and gentlemen, looks like Matt Snell in that famous Super Bowl in Miami. What a workhorse he has been. He cut the legs off the defender that time to blow that hole open. Yeah, it was Cameron Vaughn, number 46, right there, who's trying to lead on the fullback. He's ready to muscle up this time. Runnels goes low, cuts him out, and you can see the run. Quick snap. Jason White comes back, wants to go for the touchdown. Bradley can't get there. Into the corner. And he was well covered by Corey Webster. So Oklahoma, on a quick huddle, broke out with that play, took a shot at it. Sign of a confident team. They come back now with, with third down. Yeah, Corey Webster knew he had help in the middle of the field. Had a free safety there, so he waited to the outside for the post-corner move, and that's where the ball was delivered. Not a good percentage, but the most important third down of the night is this one. They've got it at five yards. 3.10 to go. Runnels goes far out to the left side of the formation. White fires on the slant, incomplete to Clayton, and a penalty flag flies at Webster again. If it's against him, it'll be an automatic first down for the Sooners. Quick slant, got inside. Webster's going to get called for getting his hands on the receiver. Corey Webster, right here. Yeah, had him hands all over him that time. Good call. I don't know if the ball would have been caught, but it's too bad. Got your hands all over the receiver. It's going to get called. Ball is spotted at the 13-yard line. Well, this team is showing the heart of Bob Stoops' favorite athlete, Muhammad Ali. They're getting off the mat and finishing this game. Switch the strength of the formation. Leave Jones in that eye back spot and bring Clayton through it and get him lined up over there in the slot. Play fake and rolls toward the slot. Lead pass, Runnels could not pull that one down, and he was being tracked that time by Cameron Vaughn. Fresh respect for Runnels when he slips out of that backfield. Vaughn had decent coverage on him. Now it's a guessing game. Will LSU bring the blitz? Will Chuck Long dial one of those quick slant passes? Will he go to the fade that Jason White is so good at throwing? Remember, they've even run a quarterback draw down here. Anything to try to get yardage against this tough LSU defense. They bring Chester in as a tight end blocker. And now the uh, referee wants to have a little bit of a huddle here. The clock jumped back up, so we've had a little bit of a malfunction on the clock during a commercial break, and it Please suddenly jumped to 10.55. Three minutes and two seconds. Start the clock on the snap. What happened there is it simply jumped back to where they corrected it the first time. And now it is reset at 3.02. 21-14. Sims, Shashan, Carter, Joseph, Brown. Up to the line of scrimmage now for the Sooners. Second down and 10 for Jason White. Back in the gun. Runnels alongside. Clayton will come through the formation. Roll to the right. Throwing back to the left, and nothing doing. Boy, great it's not open. Runnels, Runnels was picked up. He never broke free at all as the defense so well disciplined held its ground. Yeah, they, you, you, Dwayne, Dave Peterson that time, number 57, stayed home, read his keys, did what that man right there said he was supposed to do. But the quarterback goes away, and there's a back looking at you in the face. Don't chase the quarterback. Gimmick play by Oklahoma, and nothing happened. Bradley out to the left. Jones and Wilson back on the field after receiving some medical attention. It's four wide. Third down and ten now for the Sooners. White's under pressure. Got to fire it high and 
incomplete as Jones broke open, but White was under enormous pressure. He had no time left. He had to release. He was being blitzed. You see it right there. They're going to slip the back right down the middle on the all-out blitz. Get it out. Give ground. Give ground. Give ground. Just enough to throw it deep, and that could have been a touchdown. Now, fourth and ten from the 13-yard line, and LSU is going to take a timeout to talk it over. Allowed them to get right back in this football game, but now you are looking at fourth down and ten for the Sooners. White checking the sideline one final time. Blitz shows, and here it comes. White steps away, slide step, deflected, incomplete. On the ground, it was close, real close. Clayton on the dive, coming from behind, but the officials were right there on top of it. Should have been intercepted. The blitz was picked off well by Oklahoma. Nick Saban dialed it. He came after the quarterback. The Oklahoma offensive line did a good job of blocking it up. Ball could have easily been intercepted. It was tipped, though, and Clayton had a shot of it. Got inside, ball is tipped, and it does hit the ground. He double caught it, and the official was right on the call. For just a moment, as you watch this replay, it is in and out yep. of number nine's hands. Good call. No Good call about the, it. the officials were right there, and now LSU will go to work on the clock. 2.46 to go. Oklahoma has two timeouts left in the football game. They're going to burn one on first down. So 2.40 to go, and you know there's been so much controversy about the, the BCS system. Obviously, we've asked the coaches, including Nick Saban of LSU, about the current BCS system. We have tremendous respect for the system, uh, and I think we all should have respect for the system that we've kind of agreed to kind of play under. It didn't work very well for everyone this year, uh, and maybe in the future we can make it better so that it will, will work better and maybe include a few more teams. You know, I just have one wish, uh, Gary. I wish we had one more game. Just <laughs> one <laughs> more game. I'd work for free. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brent, the, uh, it seems to me like the coaches involved who have a stake in it have been more reasonable than everybody else about the whole argument. You know, I would agree with that. They, they seem to be able to see the big picture of this thing that it's hard to measure. The BCS has a tough job. They try to do the best they can under the, the limitations that they're presented. And this game is a testament to what it can be right here. And, uh, you know, listen, Pete and Carroll handled oh, yeah, everything, with class. Yeah, everything with class. Everything with class. The whole controversy being denied an opportunity to come here to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Uh, you know, you, you couldn't uh, say anything negative about Pete Carroll and the Trojans, and uh, they certainly, they took care of their business, no question about that. Skyler Green now coming through the formation, picked by Moppy, he's going to come in behind the right side, and he's to the 19-yard line, Teddy Lehman making the stop for Oklahoma, and we've got another time. Really now. like the fact that they ran the ball the first two times and called timeouts the first two times. Both coaches doing their job. Let's go to the other sideline. Here's what Bob Stoop said about the BCS. Bottom line is, if, if, if you need to be a win your conference championship to be in the BCS game, two things need to happen. Or maybe one of them. Uh, either we all crown our champions the same way, which would be fine with me, or if we're not going to, make everybody play a championship game. And if that isn't going to work, just tell us before the season starts that you got to win your championship uh, to be in the championship game. You know, any of those uh, would work. Just tell us what the rules are, and we all go play by them. <laughs> that's for sure. Absolutely. Yep, that's for sure. You know, uh, Nick Saban has been working his defense over there, telling him the game's not over. They made a great defensive stop, but the game's not over. Now, back to Oklahoma's strategy. I like that they used the timeouts on first and second down because now they've told LSU, do you dare throw the ball on third down? Because if it's incomplete, it will stop the clock. They've almost forced LSU's hand to run the ball on third down. And here it is coming up, third and four, 231. If they can stop them, seal them up inside the 20, force Jones to punt, get Perkins on a fair catch or a decent return, they'll have a couple of minutes to work with. Remember, the clock stops offensively on a first down of the college game. Huge, huge time factor when you're trying to come from behind to break a tie late. Fake again by Mauck. Complete fumble! 
incomplete. The linesman signaling incomplete. I thought for a moment he had control. It was popped out by Derek Strait. Good defense that time. Oklahoma stayed in the zone. You saw it coming in to die right there. Came, caught the ball. I don't know if he got a foot down or not. It all happened in the flash of a second right there. And if there's ever a doubt, and the uh, I think the linesman's getting an earful down. <laughs> he's pretty yeah. close to the uh, to the Oklahoma bench. Tell you, it was a gutsy but, uh, call from where he called it because he's right in the middle of that red when he made that call. The die, and now he walks back over toward that bench, and uh, there is there is the young man who made who made that call. This is. Uh, Big East crew, and uh, I'll tell you, you can, you can find look for with a couple of small things in this game, but I'm going to tell you, I think this crew has done a heck of a job. This is kind of a tough, tough yep. football game. Believe me, I I believe it. Dives all right now. The young man from Houston, Texas, are going over. Look what happened the with the incomplete pass. Now here we come. Clock has This stopped. is one of the great matchups, and LSU with that great speed has been able to get down the field on top of Perkins. They have not let Perkins turn loose. Here's number 28. Four punt returns for touchdowns this year. He's trying to stay a little loose back there. Trying to get ready. 225. They're down seven in regulation. The Gunners are covered. Then Bassey moves over now to the left. Let's see if for a moment I thought he was going to try to come. He's creeping back in. Bassey trying to come off the corner, gets picked up. So that gives the gunner a shot at Perkins, and he tears into him, and there is the penalty. As Shelby gets back on the loose football, but Adrian Mays, number seven, was partially uncovered when Bassey slipped into the formation. That gave him basically a free shot. He was picked up about midway down the field, and then he unloaded on Perkins, and this is such a critical foul there, coming There is up. no halo call this year. But don't you have to give him reasonable distance? I, I mean, he caught the ball. He tackled him. I mean, that was a great play, it looked like. On oh, both sides. Look at that. A shove on one of the gunners on one side of the field and then a personal foul on the other. There's the shove from behind. Wait, sure. Well, we'll check on. We'll get Dave here in a second. As we've got it, the other punt. Let's see if they go return this time. Last time they went block punt. This time they're going return. Hangs it high, very high. This is a fair catch opportunity. And Perkins has it near midfield. Look at that. 209, 50 yard line, one touchdown behind with a Heisman Trophy cornerback at the gears. Yeah, well, unimpeded, Dave has just passed down word to us, unimpeded is the key word. And so in the official's judgment, he interfered with the opportunity to make the fair catch. There's no standard two-yard rule in that situation, uh, but it was a judgment call. White is back. Press coverage is shown. They set the screen pass, and it's incomplete. And as you look down on our scene at the Nokia Sugar Bowl with the uh, BCS National Championship game between Oklahoma and LSU on the line. Second down near midfield for the Sooners. Four wide receivers. Low and incomplete. Webster, the defender on that side, and it is third down. Tell you, the, the at LSU pass rush that was so strong by the front four before. Now watch them when they're out of gas here. Watch these guys rush now. Half speed. That Oklahoma offensive line is, is able to handle it now, and Jason White should have time. Well, the police department has come in and Man, there's a couple of my favorite ponies. Huh? They just trotted on over with those officers. They keep the folks down off the field. Help police things after this game. Third down and ten. White in the shotgun. Left sideline too high. Threw behind his man that time and uh, wanted to really stay away. And 
Daniels has impressed him so much. He had coverage on Peoples, and it comes down to fourth down. Marquise Hill that time, number 94, the defensive end, got on Jason's feet as he threw the ball. His toes bothering him anyway, and as he stride into this thing, watch, he kind of gets in there, and you can feel it and just lets that ball go high. One, he could have got there, but he was covered pretty tightly. There we go now. Fourth down and 10, seven-point game. We got 156. Coming. Delayed blitz has got him at the 40-yard line. Linebacker Lionel Turner did not come on the snap. They decided to come with the delayed blitz. Jason White thought he had the comfort of a four-man rush. He should know better. Nick Saban in a crucial situation is never going to sit on the four. He's coming with the five or the six. And here came the linebacker right up the gap, and he bore into the quarterback. Great coverage downfield. You look at this. They've got so many blitzes, Brent. They name them after states, remember? They got so many blitzes. This might be Latvia, for all we know. They ran out of states a long time ago. They got over 50 different blitzes. I say we should just name that blitz Louisiana. <laughs> they used that one in the second game of the year. They're already in the next alphabet. Yes, sir. It's been 45 years, and now the Tigers are now going to run out the clock here. And Nick Saban is about to become the highest salary coach in college football, and... Saban is not happy about what's happened. He may think that there's too much for me. He does not want Mount to back no, he, up. He made He's got to just get down on that. Right. And uh, I, I that's think, what the coach is signaling, right, Gary? Well, I think Nick is might be confused with the NFL rule here. <laughs> because if you take a sack, the clock stops. In college, I think he's okay doing that. It's still going to run. Maybe Nick's yep. got too much NFL. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's what he wants him to do. Wraps up on the ground. Just get down. Get down right away. Now that if you stay up on your feet in that situation and you back away from the line, the defense has an opportunity to make a play. They could knock the ball away from it. Dave Perry has acknowledged that's absolutely correct. If Mark takes the snap and just goes down like Saban was signaling him, that ends the play right there, and there is no chance to force a fumble. Well, unless they fumble the snap, this football game is going to be over. And the Mount pulling back out almost tripped that time. And we are down to the uh, final 30 seconds. And uh, Well, they're starting it quick. The officials are on it. There's going to be six seconds left. LSU will take a delay a game here and figure out what the strategy is. He's up seven. Even if the clock stops and they take a delay a game, would they send the punter on no. that deep run through the end zone? No, you could trip and fall down on this turf. I've seen two guys fall already. <laughs> okay. You can't do that. There's the, there's the timeout. The fourth down is coming up now. So the Oklahoma side is huddling over here. Nick is very upset with the official spotting it so quickly. He's upset with his quarterback. He's upset with everybody. They did not want Oklahoma to have another throw. If they take a knee right here, Oklahoma will have one throw into the end zone. Now, Mark Richt caught a lot of grief for trying to run a sweep against Purdue. Remember that? And he said, we didn't want to punt again. Oh, LSU could have ran the ball wide a couple times, burned some time, and probably could have killed the game. There's always a way to second guess. The punter is on the field for LSU. Donnie Jones. No one's back. I never like putting no one back because the punter can just pooch it over the line real quickly. He doesn't even have to think. Hangs it. Had an opportunity for Perkins back there at about the 21-yard line. LSU wins the BCS National Championship.